What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That in the beautiful teal there is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif in the, in the gray. Yeah, just the regular run-of-the-mill gray. Uh, and we're going to wait for everyone to come on over from the other stream. We already have a couple of early birds today. Uh, we have bears versus bulls, obviously, and we even have Adara chiming in the chat. So we'll wait for YouTube to do its thing and uh, bring everybody on over. Personally, I am keeping eyes here on NFLX. This one really doesn't care. The market's down. The market's up. It goes its own way, baby. Breaking through that 622, up 2.5% on the day. Shout out to Netflix. All right, now we're getting some people coming in. We got the pet detective, baby. Ace Ventura in the house. JC Finance. Mateus Lane. We got Big Bob Dub. We got Richard's Automotive Workshop. I like that. ALX. S, Mr. Long Shorts, we got Adam Deleuze, Zach Griffith, Double M, we got Trinity 3R, Charon Tej, Jonathan Mencilla, uh, who else we got over here? We got Igor, we got Ponzi Fonzi, Adam Khalifa, we got Hugh Jassy, we got Fat Figure in the house, what's going up? And we even have Nicole Harris, what's up Nicole Harris, one of the OGs in the chat. Shout out to Hot Lana, we got Bullish Monk, who's me, the Piper, and Shannon Gregory. Good morning, Adara. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I do all right. You know, watching Apple, absolutely taking it on, you know what. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll try to make up for uh, that beating we're taking in the personal account right now. We'll see if we can get some good trades on. What do you have in the look at there? Yeah, I, I have a couple. I actually have two rip cells instead of dip by rip cells ready to execute. One of them is on Clean Spark. To me, this is a bit of a clean look on Clean Spark. I like this kind of rangier look. I notice we keep bouncing off view ops, so I would get out before there. Maybe saving a piece for the dream, though, because to me, this looks like it could be a flat bottom break. Lower highs. Also worth noting, the Bitcoin chart is kind of supporting what I'm seeing here, right? These lower highs. So I do have Bitcoin up. This worked for me yesterday. I was able to execute my Mara and Clean Spark trades by cross-referencing what we were doing on BTC itself because I have talked about Mother Bitcoin. And so it's like, Adara, you can't be scared to trade these names as long as you are cross-referencing Mother Bitcoin and asking her if you can take Clean Spark Mara uh, out to play. Like, I think as long as you're asking permission, I think it could fair. be okay here. Also, Upstart. Um, I traded this one yesterday as well. I have a rip sell ready here. I was trying to, much like Clean Spark, looking for these lower highs, trying to plan the rip sells accordingly. I'm not sure if I got the placement exactly right here. Looks like we might have had an even lower high than anticipated at this 2158, but that's okay. I don't want to chase. We always say don't go chasing waterfalls, so mm, um, mm, chasing mm, waterfalls. Mm, mm, mm. We sing this every day, I swear. But let's see. Um, it you fail. <laughs> you fail. Also, Sean's humming it over here, too, so <laughs> shout out. But, yes, yeah, so let's see what happens here. I might have to move this to 58 or 59. I know I said no chasing, but sw uh, swiper, no swiping, chaser, no chasing. I don't know. But let's see here, right below 60s. I think I might have been a little bit too conservative with the 63s here. I see you have taken a bite out of the apple. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to get a mean reversion. This is not my style of trading, but we're, we're going we're gonna to take a, an attempt at this apple bottom here. No, I, didn't, I actually did not mean that. On purpose. Apple bottom <laughs> jeans, boots, boots with, with the, the fur. fur. With the fur. <laughs> with the fur. And the whole um, bubbles. All right, we'll wet our beak here. Um, we'll see exactly what we get here on AAPL. Big, big move down for Apple midday. We're not exactly sure what caused this. I mean, I looked back at my blotter to see if that need him headline came in a little earlier and it actually did. So it came in earlier today. So that probably is not it there. Uh, we'll keep tabs on Apple. I mean, it was down 2% at its worst. It's pumping up right now. We're 20 pennies on the money on this trade. Let's see if it can break that 50 penny area. Katina man, there it goes. We're in the 60 penny area here. Uh, let's see if we can continue to pump. Maybe 170 comes in. I mean, who knows, right? Uh, on AAPL, a bit of a tough look today for Apple, especially with, you know, we're not really exactly sure what's going on. So um, I have to do less than, so I have to get out of this trade, sadly, but um, yeah, that's just kind of the way it is around here. Uh, let's load up the lesson du jour, baby. And for all my American friends, du jour is French for the day. Uh, sh shout out to you guys. Always e excellent in French and the metric system. You Americans are excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm just joking, of course. Come on. If I can't troll you guys. Uh, RSI reversal, Chilean nightmare. This is uh, we're talking about today. Today's lesson dives into relative 
strength index and the power to identify <laughs> potential reversals in momentum, especially um, for small cap stocks. And that's what we're talking about all week today. Um, all week today, all week this week uh, is small cap trading. So RSI can be a valuable tool, but remember, it's just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, and again, obviously, we have to introduce RSI to everybody because not everybody knows what the relative strength index is. If you already know, just uh, allow me a moment here just to give some basics. RSI is a technical indicator that measures the momentum of a stock by analyzing the recent price changes. Its scale ranges from 0 to 100, with 0 to 30 generally being called the oversold territory, potentially indicating a buying opportunity, and that 70 to 100 range is typically considered the overbought territory, suggesting a potential sell-off. Basic RSI graphic over here. Thank you, Adara, as well. Always drop in the best images in the lesson. So you can see over here the bottom scale, that's the RSI, the top chart, that's obviously the price chart. You'll see these dotted lines over here denote the 70 area, and then below that is the 30 area. And so when you're in these extended or lower areas, you're set to be in overbought or oversold territory with the middle kind of just being, uh, I guess, somewhere in between. So that's exactly what we're talking about there. But RSI is not typically just used that easily. We'll get into exactly how to use RSI. So the RSI reversal is the topic of the day. Uh, so the key to using RSI for momentum trading is ad identifying reversals. Here's what to look for. The first, the overbought reversal. This is what we're going to talk about right now. The overbought reversal. When the RSI reaches overbought territory, which again, just recall, is above that 70 mark, and then starts trending downwards. I'm talking about the RSI, not the price, okay? The RSI starts trending downward without a corresponding drop in the price. Without a corresponding drop in the price. It might signal a weakening momentum, okay? And that's what we call RSI price divergence. It works for the overbought, and the oversold territory, okay? This could be indicating to you a potential sell opportunity. Exact same thing, but in the opposite, the oversold reversal. What is this? If the RSI dips into oversold territory, which is below 30, and then starts to rise, even though the price remains low, so we don't see those higher highs on the price, it could indicate a potential buying opportunity as momentum might be shifting upwards. And here is an exact perfect example of that. Again, thank you to Adara. Look at how the price over here, this is the crest, and there's another crest. We're making higher highs. You don't have to be a chartered uh, market technician to be able to see the higher highs there. Conversely, when you look at that exact same area on the RSI scale, you're seeing lower highs. So we have what we call here a bearish divergence, which means price continues to make higher highs, but the RSI is saying, mm, go at it yourself, I ain't coming with you. <laughs> that typically means we're gonna khwadunk, and look what happens over here. The khwadunk came in, and it came in plenty, oh plenty, baby. We dipped off that 40 on eBay. Oh wow, eBay was at 40. <laughs> Back in 2008, jeez. All the way down into that 26, and then we seem to find buyers at that $26 area. So that's what we're looking for here in the both the bull and the bear case. Price RSI divergence. Why is this useful though, right? So typically what your RSI does here is it helps identify situations where the price might be by diverging from its recent trend, right? We always try to look at the price to try to gauge what it's telling us. What we could be doing is using some assistance here and the RSI helps kind of it's, I don't want to call it a leading indicator, but in this case, it absolutely is because it's making lower highs when the price is making higher highs or lower lows when the price is making higher highs. So it is leading the price action in terms of its indication. Here's an example. An overbought RSI, overbought, which means that we are in that 70 plus territory with a flat price action, so we're not making any higher highs, suggests that buying pressure might be fading even before the price drops. And that's how it's leading in nature. The RSI is making lower highs. The price is flat. I thought you were yelling. I was. The Katina man is, uh, is, uh, is uh, doing things over here. Um, 
And that's how it's kind of a leading indicator because the RSI starts making lower highs, the price is kind of flat or still making higher highs. And that's what you need to be looking for. So here's how to combine RSI with some other tools. Remember, again, RSI alone isn't a foolproof signal. Here's how to strengthen your analysis. Again, obviously, you're looking at price action. Look for confirmation from the price chart itself. Does the price movement support the RSI signals? Your answer will have to be no in certain cases, especially when there's price RSI divergence. But what happens when the price and RSI are not jiving? We look to volume. High trading volume alongside RSI reversal can indicate a strong momentum shift. So we always talk about volume being that one of those important confirmatory indicators could not be any more accurate than using RSI and volume, especially when the price is not jiving with RSI. So make sure to keep your eye on the volume. And then obviously support and resistance uh, areas, key areas of support and resistance. Consider support and resistance level on the price chart. A reversal near a key area of either support or resistance can definitely add weight to your price RSI divergence. So if you see the price really uh, turning at that $200 mark on Apple or that 165 mark on Apple and the, and the RSI is showing you that you know, the price should have been turning because there's price RSI divergence, it adds another check marks, or as Adara like always uh, likes to quote me saying, a preponderance of the evidence, a balance of the evidence, whatever you wanna call, whatever evidentiary standard you wanna use, that is kind of what we're trying to say there. And here's another excellent chart of basically that exact same thing. We have the RSI near 40, uh, even though the price is a little bit flat, and then you kind of get them in the same direction. That, this is GPP USD, by the way. Here's putting it all together. So let's imagine a small cap stock experiences a sharp price increase pushing the RSI to say above 80, okay? However, the price stalls and the RSI tr starts to trend downwards. This might be a sign to you of weakening momentum and a potential short-term sell opportunity. And I, could, I couldn't say, um, I couldn't say that I've personally used RSI with small cap trading, but after having done this lesson, I think I might absolutely do that because oftentimes we look for when the price exhaustion on a small cap gap or like SXTC, for example, or WISA even. I see WISA making moves yet again now. It's up three and two thirds. So we want to know when the price action for these bad boys has really got extended and RSI is one of those tools we can definitely use to help us in our small cap trading. And remember guys, I just wanna throw in a few caveats here. RSI is just a tool. Always consider other factors like price action and volume. I already went, I said that. And there's obviously no guarantees. Markets can be absolutely unpredictable, especially small cap low floaters. Practice good risk management. That should go without saying, using stop losses at key areas of support or resistance, depending on whether you're going short or long. Hope that helps, Adara. Ooh, yeah, I thought it was, I thank you for addressing that because I was gonna ask because this is a strategy that you've used. So mm, yeah, thank you for not. mentioning I, that. I, I that want is something to, you want to add to your yes. repertoire. Also, we got a super sale. Uh, super chat. Super I just sale, said super where? Sale. I don't know. Winners? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I woke up this morning and thought it was Saturday, so we're all here. Uh, we're, we got it. Thank you so much, Ian Respetto, for the 499 Super Chat. Any idea why Miss Lily is so weak today? Any news, etc.? Thanks. Uh, well, I love that you called her Miss Lily, and I think she also probably appreciates it, so I'm joking. Let's see what she's doing, though, because I think I did see some a story on this earlier, I do believe, but let me pull up the chart for Lily. Um, Mademoiselle? Oh, yeah, Mademoiselle. <laughs> uh, let's look this up. Because I thought I did see something. Are you seeing anything in Eli Lilly? I'll absolutely look Thank right you. now. No problem. Um, oh, okay. What is she doing? It's national or it's nationwide insulin pricing settlement was called off. Um, oh. So settlement between it uh, and Lilly and the purchase. Yeah, this is what I thought I saw this morning. And it's insulin drugs that would have capped prices and provided $13.5 million to resolve claims that the company inflated the drug's cost has fallen apart after an unfavorable ruling from the judge overseeing the case. So it looks like this could be a potential legal catalyst impacting this one. But I see what you mean, Ian, in response to this one's down about 0.6%, uh, so two thirds of a percent to the downside. Also, um, volume isn't huge on this. Usually I find when Eli Lilly's reacting really hard to a really bad catalyst, she will see 
more significant volume, but she is down about 700,000, or she's trading about 700,000 shares right now, so not insignificant. Thank you for bringing this one to our attention, Ian yes. Uh I Mademoiselle is not what I will be trading uh, right now, given the low volume, and also we have, uh, we are trading live, so buy a lily. Um, but also, <laughs> appreciate that. Also, with that in mind, I want to quickly answer the question from Harris Roosh. Ahoy. Ahoy, hello, good morning. <laughs> are you using any tools to find stocks that match your strategy with BP now that you're live? So for one, I really appreciate that question. That was something I was thinking about a lot. And I spent a lot of the weekend actually thinking, what stocks can I kind of trade that I know are going to be a little bit more appropriate for me? So I realized a lot of these EV stocks and some of these crypto names are a little bit lower and they, they move, you know, especially with crypto, if I'm going to, as long as I cross-reference um, Bitcoin itself, I feel more comfortable trading them. That being said, when I do the small cap recap now, I've also been paying more attention to those small caps, how they're moving. So I would say I'm just a little bit more, I'm not looking for any new stocks necessarily, but I'm more cognizant and I'm more aware of what some of these smaller stocks are doing, if that makes sense, I hope. I hope that helps answer your question because I, I appreciate the question. I thought it was pretty helpful. Yes, Dad Trader, I am live. This is my second day of trading now. And right now, um, both of my stocks have weirdly decided uh, for my shorts to find some support at 9 EMAs. But that being said, like, if it can't make a higher high, I'm staying in this. Upstart ended up being more of a true range than I thought it would. So I should have gone long at the bottom of the range, which I was hesitant to do just given the fact that we generally had lower highs. But yeah, as long as Upstart keeps having these uh, wicks above only on a wick basis. If we see a closing candle higher, that's what I'm gonna have to say. Sayonara, we're gonna have to get out of upstart. There was a pun in my head, but it didn't work. Thank you so much, Trixie Hobbitry. Uh, also, I love your name. And thank yeah. you for that nice compliment as well. Yes, thank you very much for that as well. Shout out to Trixie Hobbitry, great uh, name. Mahmoud uh, Adara Sharif, apart from the upgrade that SMCI got, what's your view on us? I think it means SMCI here. On the higher time frame, I think it's too overbought. Look, uh, from a technical perspective, there's one thing, and then a fundamental perspective is a different thing. Uh, with respect to fundamentals, you'll have to actually look at you know what they're bringing in, their PE, their uh, what all the different metrics there. Um, for well, they're trading extremely high. PE uh, is about 69 versus the industry standard of 21 and a half. Um, from a technical perspective though, um, uh, let's have a look. I don't usually do these uh, very thorough analyses early on like this, but let's have a look here. SMCI, so we are in the lower, okay, so a couple of things here. Uh, first and foremost, this is the daily chart on SMCI. You see here, Mahmoud, that we're holding up at the 50, the red solid line. That is the 50 period exponential moving average. We've got a definite support, you had support there on August 10th, and then again yesterday, uh, sorry, August, April 10th and April 15th, held support at um, the 50 period moving average. Uh, it also, it is now below the half, the, um, okay, so the Bollinger Bands are separated by an, an exponential moving average in the middle. We are the lower end of that middle average there. We haven't really touched the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Uh, but I just wanted to point that out. Now, I don't have RSI on here, but I'll have a look at a, lot, a little bit later because I have to load it up. It's, it's hard to say, dude. Uh, really, it's just really dependent, I feel, on what NVIDIA is doing. But there is a couple of headwinds with respect to this name um, because you see a lot of companies wanting to copy what they do. Right? There's nothing really proprietary about what they're doing. They're taking NVIDIA's GPUs and they're putting them in servers and then they're servicing them. Um, so you, you really feel like anybody else could come in there and kind of do what they do. But, you know, that's just my little two cents there. Uh, you're going to have to do a bit more of your homework. Uh, remind me a little bit later on to do a more thorough analysis from the technical side on that. Just tag me again, Mahmoud. Um, now, I want to look at Tesla because I saw Neil throw this in the chat and I was already looking at this. Tesla is at a local top here, 157 and a quarter or thereabouts, just a little bit higher than 157, seems to be a bit of a flat top. Now, before we jump in uh, willy nilly and short this and say this is a top, we have to take into account the four higher lows that it's put in there. So there's been four troughs that I can count each, maybe even more, really, if you're looking on the one-minute chart, uh, that we've been consecutively putting in higher lows in a little bit of a recovery. I mean, we touched 154. Now we're, we're dancing with 157. But 
before you want to take the other side and say, okay, it's time to go long because we're putting in higher lows, you also need to account for the fact that this area, exactly where we're at right here, is the pre-market consolidation low. So look how what we trended at during the pre-market there, okay? Every time we, we kind of dipped in off 158, we bounced off this 157 area. That is until the bell rang and we absolutely gave up the ghost at 157. So we'll have to see something on a closing basis here to get us above this pre-market consolidation low on TSLA. Again, nothing really that substantial um, on Tesla. A lot of people wondering why the stock's not going up rather than going down because what we've seen in the past is these job cuts result in price, um, the price of the stock going up because it has a, a material effect on uh, P&L. So we'll continue to watch that. I'm watching Tesla like a, a hawk right now. It hasn't broke above or um, give me any sort of signal really exactly what it wants to do, but um, these higher lows are quite telling. So if Tesla does recover here, um, I'm definitely gonna be interested in playing this some way, somehow. Here it goes. Right now, here comes the half dollar mark on TSLA. So now we're accumulating here, breaking above. So now we have to look at this candle over here. This candle printed at 1021. The best this candle could do was at 157.50. Exactly. Here we are at 45s. I just saw 46 come in on the tape. So we're awfully close to that top. But just because we break 50 doesn't mean that we're, we're headed north. Again, this is going to have to be... Um, you're gonna to have to confirm this some way, whether you're using technicals or whatever other way you're gonna use it. So we'll keep eyes on TSLA as it makes its way up. The other thing I wanted to mention, or the other name I want to mention, is AAPL right back down again into 169. The low of day uh, on the low of day today is 169.02 to be exact. So we haven't broken $169 quite yet. But we've been down there. We're bouncing up a little bit into the quarter dollar now, but it's still, you know, an anemic bounce, relatively speaking. We're coming off, essentially, a 174 top, a 173.76 exactly, to be exact. So we've dropped well over $3 here, um, and we haven't even touched noon hour yet. So looking at 169 on AAPL, looking at this other level, 157.5, there it goes on TSLA. So here come the 60s. Now we're coming into that two thirds of a dollar territory. So Tesla putting in those higher highs and higher lows. Uh, let's see if it does it on a closing basis. Yeah, so Upstart uh, made, had this nice little push up here. Notice Upstart was really kind of moving in tandem with the queues. So I want to reflect on this trade a little bit. I am down a little bit on this trade, but I'm still up on CleanSpark, which we'll, we'll get to in a minute because CleanSpark and Bitcoin are not besties right now. They're trading in opposite instead of in tandem so that was a little bamboozling but that's okay upstart really what i should have been doing was i wanted to see that lower high but i shouldn't have been like oh let's give it 58s i should have gotten in at 65s that would have been a little bit of a cleaner trade um that's okay i'm, I'm out of it we didn't lose too much in this trade i managed it appropriately we had that oomph that i was looking for that viciousness and i got out so I'm not going to beat myself up too hard on this. We're going to take it as a learning opportunity. Also being used as a learning opportunity is the bamboozlement that is CleanSpark. Really happy with this first trade here. Very proud of what I did. I kind of, the, the entry style was the same as Upstart, but I think I managed it better, if that makes sense. Okay. So I got involved when I was seeing an opportunity for a lower high here. Got, then I added because I noticed we were having this hard time getting above 40s. I was going to get out at 45, so you're giving us about 10 pennies. Add at 40, add at 40, so I was really happy with that here. Then get out some at 25s as planned, then get out the rest at VWAP. So all of this went according to plan. Then I noticed we held VWAP really well. And uh, Bitcoin was creeping back up. So I said, Adara, let's try to get along here. In the end, we got out. I think we made like two pennies on this. And I just got out because I was like, Adara, Bitcoin and uh, Clean Spark are not necessarily moving in tandem. And you don't want to take this long. I mean, I did take it because we were holding VWAP. But another part of it was that we were kind of curling back up in Bitcoin. So I was like, you don't want to take the trade with that impetus. You want to have a stronger feel for it. So that's why I had to... Get, uh, make a clean break from Clean Spark. That being said, these are some pretty clean trades. I'm really proud that I did the averaging in and that I averaged out. And of course, it was all planned. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty proud with what I did with Clean Spark. That being said, if Upstart Ooh. wants to start uh, becoming Downstart and heading back to the downside, I like this entry for a short better, but we are not getting involved too early. All right, keeping an eye on TSLA as it skyrocketed up there into 158.19. 
uh, gave up the level on 158 quite quickly. So the look here is, now does it come back in to that key area of resistance that we ID, that 157.50 and hold it? Right, that's what I want to see here. So I've got a dip trade hanging out at 157.50-ish uh, to see if I can defend that level. Uh, the ascending wedge here looks like at least it worked out intraday. It doesn't have to work out on you know the long term, obviously, because we're trading intraday. But yeah, that aggressive buy through 157 really pushed this bad boy up. And we, we touched 158.19. That is technically now the high of day on Tesla. Okay, so keep your eye on that if you want to trade TSLA. But I should uh, also mention that Adara brought this to my attention yesterday. I totally forgot about this. Uh, if you don't want to trade TSLA because, well, you're not you know, a fan of the $160 name or whatever the reason is, there's TSLL. It's a derivative, much kind of like the NVDL that we trade instead of NVDA. So that could be a possibility for you. So I've got that order out here to defend that level. It looks like it's coming back into 158 though. Chart, chart. Um, so we'll see if it makes its way back up there on uh, TSLA. Let's keep an eye on AAPL. Let me just see what, Zed, I'm up big on Apple, thinking go down to 165. I don't know what EOW means. What is EOW? End of week. End of I week. I know this from my, my retail days. I like it. Thoughts? Um, good question. I mean, I don't know. I'm going to have to see what the price action brings. I mean, if we have more issues there geopolitically, absolutely, I think we can hit 165 on Apple. But we'll have to see what the week brings. Now, I haven't looked at any small caps today, and that's not appropriate because today, I mean, all week is small cap week. So let's get to the small caps that are moving today. So we saw... The big boy on the block today, up into that $4.63. This monster started moving yesterday. It was an IPO, I believe, because I don't have any data from prior days. No, that's inc completely incorrect. It was a split on April 15th, so split yesterday. Huge, I don't know what this split is, but anyway, the point is, it's up big uh, today. It had a nice move up yesterday. Uh, 4 a.m. started to really move in, got into that $3.10 area, $3.12 area. Um, it did dip below the volume weighted average price for a little bit after the bell and wasn't tradable, but it quickly reclaimed that. And look what it's doing right now. So how do we get into this? I mean, personally, I'm not going to chase it at these levels. Got to come into an identifiable area of support. The first area I'll be looking at is 4 bucks. Uh, owing to the whole dollar level. And then I'll be looking at that 360, three and two thirds, uh, owing to that double top over here and the area that we rejected off. So former area of resistance should flip to support sometimes, not should, but it sometimes does. So looking for WISA on that. The other one, PRSO, no deets on this one. Let me pull up the deets on PRSO. So it is I a stop. I couldn't find anything, I don't think. Yeah, $4.2 million market cap. So needless to tell you, it is a very small company. And the float on this, wow, 2 million shares. So not minuscule, but not big either. It's been putting in higher lows here incrementally. It looks like the closing prints are really respecting that 20 period EMA, even though the wicks are coming below it. Now we are above the volume at average price, but we are rejecting that $2 level. So $2 proving an elusive um, you know, target to attain here for PRSO. It's been able to wick above it, but can't close above that level. So possibly a range trade here or a possible flat top break through two bucks and look for that on a closing basis. The only time we closed above two bucks was that print at 825 where we got up to, where do we get up to there? 210. Every other move above uh, two bucks has been a wick. So. That's not really that good. Go EV, this one, Adara brought this to you earlier. We're still not even really sure why this monster is moving, but uh, Go EV having a good day today. It's up well over 15%, yeah, up uh, 16 and a half. 330 is the top. Now it's broken down below the volume weighted average price and is ranging between that 10 period moving average and VWAP. Kind of a weird little um, look to it. Let's see if it can continue maybe to curl back up, but I gotta tell you, my, my spidey sense says it's probably gonna retrace because we don't have a catalyst on it. Yeah, What's AMD, up? sorry, this yeah, one moving. Thank you to um, Joanna Brewster, day trader cut, everyone mentioning this one. 
Um, I the, the news on this, we did have some catalysts this morning. Mm -hmm. Lots of analysts loving this guy. Evercore ISI, $200 price target. HSBC upgrades to buy, $200 price, or $225 price target. So AMD, lots of analysts loving this guy today, that is for sure. Uh, basically, chart-wise, this one is, is kind of a nice continuous move to the upside. What I will do find interesting is we had a little bit of a top earlier at this 164 area. Again, we always like these whole dollar levels, so I think that's certainly key. Then we kind of curl back down, bounce up again. Initially, we reject off this 164, then come back, bounce off the 90 MA, which was also, ironically, or not ironically, but interestingly enough, around this 163, 60 area, so definitely some previous uh, areas coming into play, and then we bounce right back up. That being said, now we're falling from that 165 with the swiftness. We just talked about how long it took us to break 164 decisively, so this could be a bit of a technical level. Let's see if it bounces off this 164, because 164 was absolutely a level for this guy earlier today, at least based on my analysis of the chart. Not having any new news on this, my Benzinga is up. Also, that reminds you, some people were asking, why are some of these cannabis names moving? I know Benzinga is having a cannabis conference today, Ooh. so that could be in relation to that. Yesterday as well, we had some headlines for cannabis marijuana companies asking the federal court to set oral arguments on the DOJ claim that um, cannabis tourism justifies prohibition enforcement. So that was just report, as reported by the aptly named marijuana moment yesterday. So um, can you say that again? Cannabis tourism. Basically, cannabis companies are asking federal court to set the um, oral arguments for the Department of Justice claim that cannabis tourism mm -hmm. justifies prohibition enforcement. So they just basically want, I guess, they want to hear what the arguments are. So cannabis. That's interesting. No, it it's is. nothing really to do with you. I mean, cannabis tourism to justify enforcement, so they don't want people coming into the country to smoke weed. Yeah, like they I guess do in they, that's what they're saying. Interesting. I, I think, yeah. Huh. I mean, it's, the headline, you're right, is, is, is worded away. Yeah, sure, it is. It's, sure. it's interesting there how they're thinking. Okay, we can't just all stay silent so quickly, Remy. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, so... Um, interesting. So, oh. Ramin's saying... Oh. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, so yeah. in Ontario, if you don't have an Ontario ID, they won't sell you marijuana here. You're going to have to have, like, a local ID because I guess they don't want tourists that coming in. Sense. But that's interesting because it's federally legal. So people from Winnipeg, like yourself, yeah. can come in and buy. I mean, I don't see the – yeah, that's interesting yeah. there. Yeah, well. <laughs> thank, thank you for, for yeah, thank Ram, you seriously Ram. for letting us know. So it sounds like this isn't just based on um, what I'm hearing here. It's not just a U.S. thing. This is also a thing that people are concerned about in um, in Ontario as well. So I I didn't know that, and right. I don't know, of course, what the case is in other provinces. But that's fascinating. I want to look more into this. Also, SQQQ. So I was talking before about Upstart. I was a little bit too. I was start, starting up a little too hastily on that one. I got involved in the short too early, and then it kind of backfired a skosh. Now at SQQQ, I try to be more conservative with where I want to get in. Initially, I was interested in 37s. Then I switched to 38s because I'm like, we're not getting any traction at 37s. And now we've, we, the ups, uh, SQQQ has decided to, to exist without me, which is a little sad. But the reason I like this, look at this range. I noticed the Qs have a range. And also this brings me to, I think it was Harris in the chat earlier asking, what do you look for? Has it changed how you look for stocks when you have uh, less buying power when you're live? And I said, I just think it makes me think about stocks differently, right? So initially I'd probably want to trade the Qs or the TQQs. Now I'm like, hey Adara, if you like the Qs, see if you like what you're seeing on the SQs. So of course, I'm not gonna get involved in this unless I see confluence, unless I see what I like on the Qs. Um, so we're going to have to, I, for, I re, didn't realize I said a conference right away. I was like, why did you press that? But yeah, so let's see. Right now, I think the cues could be trying to have a break higher, and I'll explain why. I do have the cues on my side chart. That's why I was looking yonder. But the cues, as you can see here, at, on the five minute, we still are arranged, but we've had these higher highs, higher lows, and this topping and turning up off the 90 MA. So I think we could have a bit of a flip in the cues, which would obviously not be optimal if I'm trying to go long the SQ cues, because that's going to be a flip it and reverse it tight move and I want no part of that. So let's see what we do here. I'm gonna keep this uh, dip by in place because I still like what we're seeing. I have no reason to say no right now, but all I'm trying to say is I will absolutely be watching those cues like a hawk. Watching like a hawk. Watch it like a hawk. Yeah. Um, in Tesla and Apple, took, took the long on TSLA because I did like the defend of 158. I, I had my dip trade set up at 154.55 uh, to trying to defend this level here, but 
Um, I did like the fact that it broke above 158 and then defended the level, so I, I took the long. I'm not gonna give this too much room. If it breaks down below 157, 70, I'm gonna get out and then look to actually defend that 157, 55 level. So we'll see what TSLA does. I'm also long AAPL at 169.05, looking to defend essentially at 169 level. So I'm just gonna send it to you while I put in my stops. Yeah, I mean, Apple has me wishing there was an Apple derivative, okay? Because look at- Oh, oh wow, it just dipped. Oh, I had to I'm get so out sorry. of that. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, fine. This is, yeah, this is, we broke to the downside because I was like, oh, I love this little range. It's so beautiful. 169, to about 169.40, 169.50. Gives you about 50 out. pennies. Gorgeous look. So, um, yeah, this this Apple, though, it did decide to, to take a little bit of a chunk out there to the downside, which is unfortunate. Right now, though, Anton asking about Mara, saying Mara is ready to go. Yeah, I think it is. The only thing I see with Mara, though, is we have a bit of a flat bottom here, this 1430 and lower highs. I would be cognizant of that. Also, Bitcoin is not at its most bullish right now in the five minutes. So we had a little bit of, you know, we talk about uh, buying or Michael Noss will talk about buying the smiley face or the roundy face, as Shreefoot's called it, and selling the frowny face. And right now we are a little bit downturned uh -huh. in BTC, right? Mind you, that didn't really stop CLSK, which has been more or less moving in a range. And, and that one I was getting a little bit involved in earlier. Of course, I like my ranges. But Mara, to me right now, I want to see what we do at VWAP. And again, I think with these Bitcoin names, just from, from what I've noticed, they really do like listening to Mother Bitcoin. So I think what Bitcoin is doing to some extent will matter tomorrow. Right now, this inability, because I was also considering going long here off that 9 EMA, because this 9 EMA has been curling up. I'm going to keep my eye on Bitcoin and see what it does there, because I think we need to see a break above VWAP right now, especially with these lower highs and this flat bottom at 1430. Also, I, yeah, I'm not in anything right now. I'd like to get back involved in some stuff. CLSK is still rangy, so if Bitcoin still keeps turning down, I'm going to get short this again. Obviously, I did leave my long a little bit early, but I left my long early because Bitcoin and CLSK were not getting along, so I was like, I may as well not be basing my trades off that. I need to work on, especially if I'm going to trade more Bitcoin names or related names, which I think I will, I need to work on using bit, mother Bitcoin as less of a you know, a strict rule and more of a guide, more of like giving you a sense. Like, I guess the curfew needs to be a little bit less strict for me, I think, <laughs> with some of these Bitcoin stocks, if that makes sense. I like sense. it. Dan the Men Emmons, I am still long NQ17840. Stop is at 17823. Targeting 17964. Sorry, 946, excuse me. Uh, 17986, 18037. Shout out to you, Dan. Great levels. I know that you hit all your levels yesterday, so shout out to you, my man. I uh, got out of Apple uh, quick, quick there as it gave up the ghost at 169. A couple of attempts there at 169. Third time was not a charm. It touched 169 here and then a little bit there and then hua boom. Um, the flatten key, which is kind of like our get out of dodge key, wasn't working, so I had to actually take a little bit more of a hit on this and I would want it to, but got the best of it as it tanked about 50 more pennies uh, after that. So keeping an eye here on AAPL for a possible uh, another move. Now, still in this Tesla trade, uh, we're finding a lot of resistance, I gotta tell you, at 158. So I put my stop a little bit below um, this trough over here in the mid 15770s. We'll see if we can break and hold above 158, but it is a bit of a tougher day for Tesla here. So we need to realize that. Even though it's putting in, you know, you can see the higher lows coming in here and the higher highs as well, but there's gonna be, you know, a top to that at some point, obviously. So hopefully we don't catch that top. Let's see what else everybody is up to here. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. All right, well, nothing really that interests me here. So let's look at oh, some of the small so cappers. Uh, the small caps are a good look today. Let's, Wisa just dipped nicely into $4, right into four, and then got held up. So this is the level we were talking about, possibly here, the whole dollar level, or this $3 and two thirds level on WISA. We're gonna have to load that up on a screen. What do you got with the firm there, Daryl? Well, I noticed it on your screen. Oh, and I was like, oh, I like it's it. It's rangy. Yes, that's why That's why I was like, I mean, we we know. Usually if I see Sharif's <laughs> screen and gasp, I'm noticing a range. I feel like that's kind of, and I feel like Sharif is now kind of um, in tune with that as well. But yeah, I like 
You know what we're gonna do here? Really small size, I wanna put that out here. I wanna go short, 44s, and I wanna take it to about 30, where is this? Like, We'll give it like 34s, like 10 pennies, because I like this range, and I wanna play the range I'm seeing and not the range I want to see. Now that sounded really philosophical and weird, but let me explain what I'm talking about. Upstart. I noticed we were kind of getting into this range earlier here, like at the bottom, and I didn't go long because I was like, oh, but Adara, we're seeing lower highs. Don't do this, right? <laughs> and then if I had gone long, it would have worked way better than me trying to go short. So I think that looks like, if Adara, what you're seeing, you have to get involved in right now, affirms in the midst of its downturn. So if I can get a pop up a couple pennies and get in as we're on the downside, why not do that, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, that you, if the, the aggression's all directed at me there. I was just like, Adara, what are you doing, girl, with that upstart? So if I like this affirm, why not confirm my suspicions and take this affirm short? I think I lost the, got lost in the sauce there halfway through. And now affirm decides it might want to break up a little bit. Was it spicy sauce? <laughs> Was it spicy sauce? If I have a, a negative reaction, it probably is. <laughs> this is when affirm decides to break up. We're going to give this about 10 pennies. I like this 55 level because to me that was definitely a top earlier. And then also that pre-market area. So I, I'm interested to see what we do here. I think Affirm does not want me here. I think Affirm will be confirming my need to leave the trade. So there we go. This was a, this was certainly a little bit of a, a bullish surprise oh. here for me and Affirm. Yeah. We had this little churn to the downside. Room. We were Down. kind of down on the day. Okay, we have to leave Affirm. Um, so yeah, bye-bye Affirm. It was nice knowing you. Thank you for letting me visit. Now we're turning down a bit here at 55, so I'm gonna watch this. I wanna see that viciousness. I talk a lot about the swiftness, the viciousness. And you know what, we're gonna get out here because really small position, by the way, I wanna confirm there. Um, because I don't wanna like be like, oh, just give it a couple more pennies. No, Adara. We are beyond that. If you if we hit your area, you have to say bye-bye. Nice, Adara. So time to leave a firm if a firm will let me. I know you were saying Apple wasn't letting you leave. I th oh, we just got out of a firm. Yeah, so the flatten go. key wasn't working. I had to actually go in and enter an order uh, to get out. So that, yeah, but thankfully it didn't tank on me too, too much. But yeah, that is something to be aware of. I don't know if you're gonna have that issue. I hope you don't, obviously. Fingers but crossed. yeah, yeah. So flatten, just so you understand, uh, guys, we have uh, certain keys here to help us get out of positions. If you know, we're a little bit in trouble. The flatten is a market order sometimes, so they have issues sometimes in the aftermarket and the pre-market, but typically we don't have an issue with that during regular trading hours, so a bit of a, an unusual one there. I'm keeping my eye on Tesla. I'm not gonna be in this one for much longer. If it dips in the mid-70s here, looks like we're gonna cover this one as it is not breaking 158. So this might be a short on right now on TSLA as it did break that 158 area, and I'm gonna go short here. I'm gonna actually flip on Tesla, so we'll see what we can get to the downside here. I'll be looking to cover around the 50s because that's where we had that bottom earlier on TSLA. So looking for possible support area at 150, a 157.50, excuse me. And here comes that 157.50 area. So let's put a beak wetter right there. Um, and we'll see if we can get that covered. Uh, once it makes its way down, and there it is, we covered that. So I'm happy that I flipped the script on Tesla. I knew that it wasn't gonna, it wasn't gonna pop up from the mid one fifty, mid one fifty seven sixties. That this was likely a short, at least um, for the short term. Keep your eye though on that one fifty seven fifty for an area of support because this is one fifty seven fifty to one fifty seven twenty five. It's a bit of a twenty five penny range. Uh, because this is the uh, this is the area here that we had topping tail candles on, but the majority of the prints were all ending up at 157.20. Like, look at that. That's what we did here initially. All the closing prints are all south of that 20 penny area. So that's what's making me think. You know, we may this might be another long at 157.20, 157.50. But we're printing on it now, nicely in the money on this one. About 30 pennies in the money on TSLA here as it comes back down. Um, yeah, that's basically it there. What else is going on? Um, we haven't really looked at any other Mag 7 names. All right, I'm covering Tesla for the rest over here. Let's look at some of these Mag 7 names. Google, awfully strong. What is going on with Google? Nice recovery off that bottom, 153, let's say, and a half. Technically, the low of day is 43, right back into that 154. 70-ish, uh, still below Friday or yesterday's closing print at 154.86. So we're still below that, and that was the IB high as well at around 155, just a smidge above 155 uh, for Google. So keep your eye on that 154.90-ish, 115.10-ish, let's, let's say that. Uh, Tesla continuing to come down here. 
Uh, so not a bad short there off that 158 rejection there. Yeah, I mean, I think, too, um, I think Tesla, speaking of rejection, I think hopefully Tesla doesn't reject La at this base because I like, I know you were trading TSLA, and just mm. as you were saying, hmm, this could be holding, I was thinking, hmm, this could be holding, and I'm getting involved in TSLL. Dang. So I like this kind of bottom of this area here. We broke above it, and if we hold it, which I noticed we kind of were, Dang. and I liked what I was seeing as well, on TSLA, which is the big sister or older cousin of TSLL. <laughs> TSLL very much looks up to her. So if TSLA is doing, doing her thing 21, I think TSLL might want to as well. This might be another issue of what I call my conservative placements, which is that I go like a cent or in the case of mega caps, like 10 cents, but in the case of my little babies that I've been trading lately as I get more comfortable trading live, I'll call it like a penny or two, where it's like if I have, I, I need to work on having the placements more sharp. So I wanted to get involved 39s because I didn't want to get involved too early, but now it looks like 40s might be the place here for Tesla, right? But I still, or TSLL. But I still don't want to chase, so I'm going to keep it here for now, wait and see what happens. That being said, though, the conservative placement did burn me a little bit here for the SQs. I wanted, I should have gotten 37 instead of 36. We pop back up here. I'm not getting back involved in this, though. We are seeing this range here of like four pennies. If I took this with a decent share size, there could be a possibility here, but I don't really want to do so yet. Also, I want to note here, we are seeing, I mentioned this earlier, but I think the divergence between CLSK and Bitcoin continuing to be, Siri, I'm not talking to you. Yeah, stop interrupting. Siri, she was like, I didn't hear that right. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you weren't supposed to. But yeah, so CLSK continuing to these lower highs I was noticing, but it does so while Bitcoin is making this very bullish five minute candle. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I, I'm noticing this interesting little divergence in between what we're seeing with the, um, the CLSK and the BTC here. Let's take a look at Mara as well, because I know someone was asking about Mara. Yeah, so Mara, like I said, I want to see what we did at VWAP. We have this wick up into VWAP and we cannot claim it. So I think Mara, for whatever reason, and Bitcoin, and also, like much like CleanSpark, looking a little bit more bearish than Bitcoin is for me right now. Darren asking if there's an SMCI little sister ticker. Mm. I don't know. Oh, Do you know if there's I like a don't think it's not oh. big enough, but we'll, we can check. Um, I, I, Neil's going to have a look. I appreciate yeah, that. Thanks, great, thank Neil. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know. That'd be really interesting because it is a monster. It's like I'm expecting them to split any day now. You'd think they'd want more retail investors, uh, but yeah. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Also, I just want to, sorry, to uh, quickly here. Uh, the reason Nike moved was Adidas reported its quarterly earnings, is what I'm seeing here. So people were asking what happened with Nike. And I mean, wow, wow, Nike. We had this drop here from this just shy of 94 area, at least on a closing basis. Then we're coming here. But look where we found support. That's right. Previous resistance, 93.25. I mean, we'll have to see if we hold the support, but at least on a wick basis on this five-minute candle, we're holding support at 93.25. I think this could be an interesting look here, at least for myself and for how there I is. trade. But of course, you know, take that how you will, everyone. Not advice, just my take on the chart. I want to see what we do at this 93.25. Really? Though I might, will not be getting involved in it myself. Also, Tesla and I think Little Sister both holding up really well here. So TSLL, if you want to drop just one penny lower so I can join and, and ride the, the little baby Cybertruck, instead of the Cybertruck, we'll call it the Model 2 because it's not the Tesla is the Cybertruck, right? So the TSLL will be the discount Model 2. So we're going to be riding that Model 2 uh, to the upside, hopefully. I like it. I like yeah, let's see. Neil says there might be a two-time levered SMCI derivative trading on the London Stock Exchange. And Neil, is there a ticker for that? We, we don't have, um, well, I'll have to get permissions for it myself because I don't have access to LSC on here, but I have it on my, my own platform. Uh, so we'll get that for you guys. Don't worry. Uh, if there is one, we shall let you know. All right, keeping eyes on TSLA here because it is defending that previous level that we talked about. That is that 157.20 level. So we took this bad boy short and printed on it, but it is defending that key level. So is this time to go long again on TSLA and play the ranges. It put in a bit of a bottoming tail candle. Let me see, 157.60. Uh, I'm gonna go long if it breaks 60. Uh, we'll see. that voice. <laughs> I know. Uh, I know. I'm, I'm trying to convince myself I should, I should, and then, you know, sometimes weird noises come out, uh, and I do apologize about that. Uh, I'm looking to see if I wanna go long on TSLA as it did hold that 157 and a quarter level, which was previous area 
of resistance and we use that area as a, a new area of support once it is reclaimed. So we'll, we'll continue to watch that. But I feel like there are other better trades that I could be having here rather than trying to fight a name that's down 2.5% on a day on a long. So I think I should probably catch myself here before I make dumb mistakes. Uh, there are better trades. I'm talking about you, Softy. I'm talking about you, Google, and Amazon. They're all putting in higher highs, higher lows. Well, not higher highs in the case of... Uh, Google, it has to break above that 155.14, but you see the micro trend there bottomed out at 153 and a half, and it's been popping up. It's knocking the door of 155 now, so a buck and a half off the bottom. Much in the same can be said for AMZN, 182 and a quarter LOD, and it's trading at 184 and a third now, so nice recovery there. The only one that really hasn't recovered in MAG7 World is the one that was not tanking yesterday, prior to the geopolitical news, which is AAPL. Apple is in a down and to the right that is completely secular of a move than any other Mag7 name. If you can look at the chart Apple over here, it, the chart doesn't jive with the others on the day. So AAPL is the crappy one today. Well, if you're long, obviously, if you're short, you're probably singing this one's praise. Anyway, Meta as well doing its thing. Coming into that 503 level, we had a bit of a res uh, resistance area last time we made it into this area, this general area, 502 and three quarters, 502 and two thirds, breaking through that level now, trying to maybe take that 505 level that we couldn't take there uh, at around 10 o'clock. Meta, nice, not a bad look, up half a percent on the day. So we'll look to be getting in some of these names. I was about to talk about the futures, because we were doing the dance with no pants at 17.9, and now we've cleared 17.9. Here comes 17.9 and a fifth. We're, we're trying to break above that 20 area. The high of the day is about 10 points higher than where we are right now at 17.931. But I got to tell you, it looks like a very rangy day today on the futures, and I'm really inclined to take a short here. Adara, I don't know what you feel about these levels. Look at this quadruple like top it. over here. This looks like an inter interesting range trade on the future. And every time I tried to take that break of 17.9, I think this was like a couple of weeks ago, uh, before I went on vacation, uh, when we were ranging and I tried to look for a break or, uh, or hold of a key 100-point level on the futures, and I kept getting cut up because it was actually ranging. And this is exactly what I saw last time around. So I am very inclined to possibly take a short on the Triple T triple Q's here. I'll send it to you while I set up. Yeah, I think I want to go long the SQQs, so we're on the same page. Uh, and I was noticing because initially I was worried we're kind of going to be breaking up on the Qs or breaking down on the SQQQs because I'm seeing the same thing on both, which is on the SQs, uh, this move down off the 90 MA <laughs> on the Qs and move up off the 90 MA. That being said, like Sharif said, we've had this massive respect for these two levels. So on the SQs, we're talking about um, 11.35 to about 11.50. So I like this. I don't want to be too hasty on this either. Adara, breathe. <sighs> Do it. Okay, small position. There we go. We're going along the Qs. We're also, or the SQQs, mind you. I'm also trying to go um, long Tesla here. I'm still not sure if I'm going to be allowed into the Model 2 because we're talking TSLL and not TSLA. Uh, Tesla holding up really well at that level still, that one 57.50 asks, so Tesla, TSLL is equivalent, which is roughly that, um, ooh, we just got a little bit of a move down here. I'm watching, I, I'm going to see what we do at 34s. Initially I drew 35, but that's because I was trying to get it at 37s or 38s initially, so adjusting that, I want to see if we break below 34s, because that was that lower wick we got earlier. I never want to stay in a log when we're at low of day, that is just not going to be my vibe. Um, and it looks like I am out now. We're going to be getting out, so that's okay. Really small position, just like I said, practicing, getting involved in trades and being more comfortable taking trades, trusting my instincts a little bit more. So, um, and honestly, I have to say, it's pretty fun as well, too, like learning, getting to take this next step on this trade journey in front of everyone, too, because it's like you're learning, you're learning live in front of people, right? So the win, for win and for, for better or for worse, uh, I, I'm, you know, sharing every, all these opportunities and experiences. So pretty nice. Got a little bit chopped up there. We're still positive on the day because we did have that little clean, that, that clean spark trade, I guess, was, was pretty clean spark. So happy with this one. <laughs> if we, 
honestly, this is so rangy. I need to be looking at CleanSpark more because CleanSpark has been kind of, to me, the range of the day. And I keep missing it because I'm like, oh, it's Bitcoin doing it. It's like, Dara, at this point, CleanSpark and Bitcoin are not really besties. You can look at it, but don't rely on it. Uh. That's what's going to be happening here, at least for me, I think. That being said, Tesla's still holding up well. So I'm still interested in entering that model, too, there for, for Trestle. How are you doing on your I'm like four pennies out of the money right now on the T triple Qs, but let me tell you, man, uh, I don't know. This could, this could, this could be a run. And the reason I say that is not specific to the futures of what I see on the futures chart, but what the Meg Seven are doing. Well, obviously, let's call it the Meg uh, Five today, because uh, Tesla and Apple, well, they're kind of a little bit of Debbie Downers today for sure, bringing this market down, down. Everything else, really, to be honest with you, other than uh, Apple and Tesla, green in Meg 7 world. Even uh, Netflix uh, doing, Netflix is the beast today. Let's be real about it. Netflix is up two and a quarter, outperforming even NVIDIA and AMD. So uh, they'll they report Thursday night? Okay. So they report Thursday, and I've seen this before. A lot of people doing buying before the earnings report. So we'll keep eyes on uh, the Meg 7, obviously, as well as the others. Uh, let's see if we can get a nice move down on the future. We're short here, baby, on the T triple Qs, playing the range. And Nadera Panera trade. Shout out to the Katina man, baby. Uh, he's back from the walk and talk. Did you drop a? There is a hotline walk and talk, baby. So if you follow the Katina man on the gram, get on there. He dropped hot lines, baby. So, uh, I, and I always listen to the walk and talks. So I'll tell you. Hey, Adara is killing it over here, bro. <laughs> Here we go on the future, and we fill on the future. Please, this dang punch about this one, taking that top down. There we go on the T triple Qs. Let's see if we can make it down a little bit lower. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, it, you know, whatever. Congrats on those Qs. That nice little move down there on the side chart, as you can see on the Qs. Test, oh. we did dip a little bit here. We're giving this about, we're going to see what we do at 35 to 34. And I say that because that was where we had that little dip earlier. Lower lows, no go for me for this TSLL. All right. T that was too many L's in a row. That's okay. But yeah, so let's see how we do on, on this Tesla. Like I said, the little sister of TSLA. I'm going to watch too because what's nice is these two actually are very similar looking today. And Shreve was mentioning this earlier too. If you're going to be trading um, these these names or the derivatives, you have to see what that what the the sister name is doing, right? To see how we're doing. Right now, Tesla has the same kind of situation. What we do at this next lower low, which is going to be that 156.70. Is very similar to the area I'm looking for at 60, 634, 635, right? So I'm going to look for that confluence between these names. That being said, it does look like we could be looking to break a little bit lower. Elon saying, hey, Derek, keep it up with your journey of trading live. Thank you so much. Uh, today, the market could close green with two beers. Some other people <coughs> got shout out to Trader CL was mentioning, do we think Papa Powell could be a bullish event? I don't think they said Papa, Papa. Powell, but I am. But yeah, Pete, we'll have to see what how Papa moves this market because we do have him speaking with... Uh, BOC Governor Tiff Macklem at 115. And also dropping hot lines with Christine Lagarde, oh. the ECB uh, president. So it seems like a, as if it, it's like a central bank meeting. A or festival. Money, 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 money. Bro, money, she's money, killing money. me. I don't know how she does it. All right, just covered my trade on T triple Q's 25 penny winner. Look at the T triple Q's head down. There's that move down below 17.9, Katina man. Uh, so now let's keep an eye on the long, okay? Let we just we just dipped aggressively from 17.936 into 17.9. Now I'm hesitant to try and say I'm going to guess 100 point levels, but the point of it is. I just need to be aware of them, okay? We don't have to take them, but we just need to be aware of them because if it starts turning there, we want all the smoke. So let's see exactly what we get here. The T triple Q still, well, the Fuch in general, on the way down. Um, and let's see what it's being precipitated by. Well, softy, aggressive down, meta aggressive down, likewise with AMZN and NVDA. Uh, NVIDIA just dropped uh, $4. In one five-minute candle there, Katina Man. So shout out uh, to the Katina Man who had like a big banger today on NVDA. What? He has INTC short? Bless you. Okay, so he's short Intel right now, and he's printing almost as much as he printed on NVDA. Big move down for the future. I'm disappointed in myself for having covered too quickly there, but we didn't have the kind of shareage 
uh, to allow us to kind of, you know, wet our beak multiple times. But the point is, we got the trade right, and that's really all that it is. But wow, wow, look at the fuge. This was really a level, eh? This yeah. was a level, and that's why I looked over to you, because you're the level queen over here. I should have uh, stayed in my long. Right? And I, this is what I was looking at, guys. This is it right here. How many times are we going to touch this general area in above that 17.9 and then turn back? We did it once, twice, OB thrice, and then a fourth time came in. So we're holding up at VWAP right now. Let's see what we do. Oh, levels. This is, I, I gave up a little bit too early. I think I got out here around the low of day. I didn't like that breakdown. I should have waited. I should have been a little bit more patient, but that's okay. What I'm going to learn from this trade is, Adara, just work on those entries, work on being a little bit more confident. Uh, thank you for calling me the level queen. I think, you know, a little bit <laughs> ambitious there, but I, I, it's something to work towards there, I guess. Yeah, why not? Appreciate that. And you range trade well, and you thank have you. excellent um, straight horizontal lines on your chart. You know, they're very good. That's a read. <laughs> So th this comes from, I used to draw my lines, and I'll show you guys on this chart to kind of show what I mean. Um, so, for example, for the top of this range, what oh, I would no. do before is I would do this. That's very stressful And it for would me. be very crooked, and it looks crooked on the chart, and the Sharif would be like, Adara, please don't do that. <laughs> and so now it, it looks, it's easier for everybody if I just apply the line this way. So that is what that little um, nitpick was referring to there. So shout out to Sharif. Also, um... I was gonna thank you, uh, Joanna Brewster, for that the shout out with Festival on the wordplay there. <laughs> I mean, why not? Um, if we can make a pun, perfect. We can. Gatekeeper asking the question we all want to know though: Is what? this where we all get bamboozled again this afternoon? Well, I mean, you tell me uh, because you okay. Here, here's what I want to say: We always look for the take of a one. Well, I always look for the take of the 100 point level, right? Whether we're breaking down below it or above it. And the problem with that is on days when we're rangy, and I learned this before I left on vacation because I ended up having a bad red day that day because I kept trying to take the break or the drop below that 100-point level. And then I ended up reflecting on the chart when I was at the airport. I'm like, what the hell did I do? And it ended up being so obvious that it didn't matter that 100-point level that day. It didn't matter what the closing print that day. It was a range trade. And that's what I saw today with the 17 9 a quarter short on the future, and now we're bouncing a little bit here off uh, seven, yeah, at VWAP. We did wick below VWAP, but we're trying to close above the volume weighted average price. Big Kyle Burdett planting potatoes and short the spy, 505, shout out to you, Big Kyle. I love that. I, I didn't even look, see where the spy is at. You know, I nary trade the spy, but yeah, that's a great short there, my man. You're printing because, well, you're over a dollar in the money, 50358 there is the low on the SPY. Let me tell you, the NQ outperforming the SPY. The NQ is flat as we speak. The SPY, or the ES, excuse me, is down 0.17. The Dow is the king of them all today, up a quarter of a percent. And the Russell, typical, uh, true to form, uh, the worst of the bunch, down 0.6 on the day. The, uh, the rest really taking it on the chin. But you know what else is taking on the chin? AAPL, this thing cannot catch a break. It just printed yet a newer low. 168.27, 168.27, Katina man. New low of day on AAPL. And now I'm trying to discern what this thing is respecting on the day. What levels is Apple, you know, what can I work off here? And what I see is a nice rejection off the 10 EMA. So if this makes its way back into the 10 EMA, we want all the smoke on a day where it is the weakest of the bunch, two and a half per, well, not the bunch. Tesla's still weaker, 3%. Two and a half percent, though, nothing to sneeze at here. If you are short inclined, yeah, 168 and a quarter. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit here on, um, on AAPL, because I want to tell you, oh, there is a 168 level here that can be defended on Apple. This is the daily chart on Apple, and we have not closed below this level I think since the fall, yes, October, was the last time we printed, or we closed, excuse me, below that 168 level. So 168, in my book, is a long, all right? And we're awfully close to that. 168.27, short today. This is, this is the daily on AAPL. And the last time we touched 168, no, so that, that's, that's incorrect. The last time was on April 10th. Prior to that, though, it was March 7th. Neither of them closed below 168, so I'm going to be looking to go long Apple 
near 168 Adair. Yeah, well, all, uh, this is pretty funny, too. Renzo saying, leave Apple alone. It's already dead with a little crying, <laughs> crying emoji. But, yeah, the Apple certainly, we've been talking about this, having its own move compared to what the market was doing. Apple, you were taking advantage of that range trade to great effect yesterday when the rest of the market was doing things. <laughs> Apple was just ranging at 165. Yeah, so I think, 75. yeah. Oh, sorry, 170. Like $10 that, ago. A see, day. that's why I didn't feel right Same. to say. Yeah. 175. Yeah. But, yeah, um, so I think that's really cool. Speaking of ranging, though, SQQQQs, I'm just gonna oh. three Qs. I like this. I like that we're seeing this lower high here. I was initially interested in the 50s, but now I'm like, we're gonna start building the position at 47s. Now, I will be willing to add if we get to 50s. If we break above into this 54, 55 area, I will be getting out. And then we're gonna be looking to take profit around the 37, uh, 37, 1135. So I'm comfortable with that. It looks like once again, we are setting our areas of entries a little bit too conservatively. So that is one thing, like I said, that I'm trying to work on. I think it comes from being a little bit nervous still as I start live trading. But as Sean says, and something I'm always trying to learn from is a scare trader is a deficient trader. So I need to work on that. I need to work on being a little bit more confident, especially because we're talking one or two petties. What happens is I get a little spooked because we have trades like upstart where um, well, I want to say here, I'm very happy with where I got out of this because it could have broken up a lot higher. But basically with upstart, I wasn't confident in the long, even though we had this range because I was like, hey, but we're seeing lower highs. Why was I British? I don't know. <laughs> and then if I'd taken the long, it would have been a fine trade. I would have gotten out at the top and we would have been all good. So I need to trust my instincts a little bit more. Someone once said Bro. in this chat that I thought was really cool. Tra new traders have the instincts of, of a baby. And I mean, maybe not untrue, but I think you have to learn how to hone your instincts. And that's what I'm trying to do a little bit more. I agree. Yeah, no, there is, okay, there is that sense where if you're a newer trader, you less, you overthink less because you know a lot less, right? Yeah. So, you know, in some ways that can be a blessing. In some ways, you know what I mean? Like, all right, let's get to the blessing here. It's blessing the longs, WSA on the way to six bucks, a cool 236%. This thing is an absolute monster, bro. What the hell is this thing doing? 110 million shares uh, traded on the day. I'm gonna give you the deets on this. The float is big though, guys, okay? It is not a small float, despite the fact that it is, a, it's not even a small cap gapper. It's a billion and a half market cap. That's probably after the, the you know, the good couple of days that it's had. But anyway, 225 million share float. It's a little on the larger side. You wouldn't know at it looking at how it's trading. It's trading like a $5 million, or sorry, a 5 million floater right now. This thing is absolutely pumping to the high side. It's giving you decent areas of retracements to get in. You're not having to chase it. It's giving you pullbacks over here off that four and a half rejection into four. You buy off four and then it skyrockets into six. You got that five and a half rejection, then it came into five. You buy off five and here goes. It's breaking six, new HOD on WISA. So let me just pull this up on the side chart. Yeah, 612 is now the high of day. That might not be lasting for all that long as we're right back above six again. I'm gonna need this off a key area of support. I just won't chase it at these levels. It's too much of a, a lottery ticket uh, here, whether it continues to head up or down at these random levels. But WISA, very, very strong. If you were a small cap trader, this is kind of what we want here. Um, and you, you know, I'm not going to say you don't see this kind of stuff midday, only pre-market. I know some people think the best time for the small cap gappers is the pre, but I don't tend to agree with that. I think they have a good time at it in the pre, no doubt about it, but they do run like you see WISA. And we had a couple of small gap gappers that were moving yesterday too. Yeah, I mean, some of them yeah. don't always run at one time, but yeah. you know there is one time that something always happens. Oh. And it's now, and it's Neil, and it's his lesson of the day. Welcome to the lesson of the day is always brought to you by real trading make real trades get fast executions with real trading and uh, have the best trading platform out there for my money. Now today I want to talk about something that's important because we always say the cost of doing business in trading is going to be when you take an L right like unless if you win 100% of the time then you're an algo or you're cheating or something along those lines. So you've got to properly assess your winning trades versus the amount that you paid to get them. Because what you're gonna find is the ones with that hyper efficiency are the ones that you wanna scale. And the ones where you had to pay a bunch to win a little are obviously the ones you don't want to. Like, let's be real. You go to a swap shop, 
and uh, you're buying your you're buying baseball cards, whatever the heck you want to get. But at a certain place. Man, you're only ever flipping and making 10% margins on what you pick up, but somebody else always gives you a good deal. Maybe you want to wait around for that shop to open up. That's what it's all about. You always want to be getting a good deal in life, and you want to be getting a good deal on your trade. And that starts with properly assessing each trade versus, versus its own risk to reward. So I'm going to start with probably the easiest example of how you assess risk versus reward in a trade, and that's gonna be when you have some type of a setup that is a very simple one entry, usually you're gonna have a very tight stop and maybe it'll be a range bound trade. Uh, how you get out of it is always going to be different. But if you look at a breakout strategy, that's usually pretty simple. Because when you take a breakout trade, I think we can all understand, like if a stock goes above X, you then trigger as it breaks that price or breaks below Y, you then short as it breaks that price, you have one entry, you set a stop order, usually you're looking to run on momentum, it goes, great, it doesn't, you're gonna be out. But let's look at Nvidia here, just as an example. So Nvidia, oddly enough, it gave the same setup, it did the same thing as it did the day before, where you get a fake, fake out to the bottom early at the open, and then it breaks out the top. So similar setup today, this is not a mean reversion trade, this is it's already made the move back up, the end up, it ends up breaking a high, so it's an 870.50. It's not an even dollar break. It breaks an 870.50 high. Now, depending on your stop placement, I think there's two places. I had it at the even, so 50 cents plus slippage is a risk. Now, if you had it at the pre-market high, that's reasonable as well. Then you can say I'm risking it back into you know, 868. So if you're having a wide stop, you're risking two dollars and fifty cents. Tight stop is risking fifty cents. From there. You have to ask yourself how it is that you are exiting the trade so you can proper ju properly judge this. Now, as you can probably imagine here, because I had a 50 cent tight stop, I'm scalping on the way out to a target in front of 875. So when it goes and pushes to 872, the initial push, I'm gonna get just over a dollar. And then on the second leg, gonna get just about $2. And then on the last leg out, gonna get out 74 and a half. So when you think about these three exits, you're gonna get a buck 25, and the next push is gonna get to, that's 325 in gross, and the next one is gonna give you $4. That's 725 in gross, so I'm making two four, maybe two half. Right, so about that two four to two half range on a 50 cent risk, give it slippage, and let's call it 60 cent risk. So it's about a four to one risk to reward. Now I said this in the live show that this particular setup on Nvidia has been working eight, nine times out of 10 recently and is generally like a 70% style trade. So if you, like that win rate with a stock that's also giving you when it goes all the way, a good four to one risk to reward ratio is a fantastic trade. You wanna take it every single time. Now that's the reason why despite looking short originally today on Nvidia and looking short on the chips, a lot of the chips in general, I flipped to a long trade because that particular setup was just really, really good risk to reward. Based on what it's costing me when it loses versus what it's, what it's winning when it works is just absolutely fantastic. So that's one that you wanna make sure you're taking each time. And you'll I'll go from looking at one thing to, oh my goodness, that's an A plus setup. I'm gonna go ahead and take it. Now you've got to also consider, and I started by saying where is the out and how much are you risking? When a trade wins, you're gonna just look at the PL that it was up, and sometimes you're not gonna look at the overall of that trade. So I'm gonna give you one more example here for something in Coinbase. It was a VWAP retracement trade with the trend to the downside. I did have an in and out flat. We're gonna pretend I didn't keystroke for 10 cents because it doesn't really mean anything. And then when I get back into the trade, it's essentially at the same price. This is the trade that we're gonna judge. So we come back into VWAP here on Coinbase, and it's at 215 and a half is that little wick up there where I want to give it just above. So I want to short back into this level. It's got a consolidation $2 lower, and I want to take some out in there and then try to hold it to the low. That's the setup that I'm working with on this trade. Now I go into the short, I get that little scalp trade, I end up not getting two bucks, but about a buck 50 and reload the trade. Now if I don't, reload that trade, I'm risking a dollar change, scalping half out to go one to one, and then holding for a potential $4 move. If I do reload the trade, then we're back into square one. 
When this was down here at the low, you're sitting in a two and a half dollar winner and you're at two to one on, the, on, on your trade while still holding half of it. At that particular point, it ends up running the stop and losing. However, when you're losing 150 on that trade, so let's say you have 100 shares, you lose 100, 150, it's easy. So you lose 150 on that. You take two entries, it's 200, so you lose 300 on that trade. When it's two in the money, you're up four. So when it's sitting in the money here, you're actually up unrealized more than you're down when it loses. However, the setup isn't to just take it out there. Like I understand just like the Nvidia trade, okay, if I'm reloading this and I'm taking some out for half, the point of that trade is to risk a little bit more of your gains and hold it into that bottom. So when I end up losing on this trade, I remember that I'm losing a fraction, a small fraction of the potential gain. Because that was a $4 target if it does consolidate and break down. So I know nobody wants to turn a trade that's in the money into a potential losing trade by not taking all of the profit, but you've got to remember the overall strategy. Coinbase is something that I thought could give me a 4 to $5 winner. It eventually actually did that move twice in the day. So you've got to judge the strategy on its merits. I can't just look at that and say, oh man, Neil, you were down, uh, you're down on Coinbase. That was a bad trade. No, that was a trade that I was in the money, I scalped some out, I limited the loss by taking some profit, but then I held for the bigger winner, and it would have been my number two stock had it gone all the way to the bottom. It's all about that risk to award. And for example, if you are looking for that bigger move, and that is your A plus trade, just like Nvidia, then you should be okay with taking, if you can, a small L. Because the reality is, if something is going to give you the extended move, you've got to give it the chance to do so. If I simply grade that against a standard scalp trade where oh, I'm trading it inside of the range, I should never let that go. I should never let that $2 range trade get away from me, never because that wouldn't make any sense. If you're only scalping inside of a range and you don't take that profit when it goes back and forth for 25 minutes, then you're doing yourself a disservice. But if you're grading it as a bigger move, then you've got to understand that requires you to hold it and sometimes that will mean turning a profitable trade into a small losing trade if you've scalped some out or maybe even a big losing trade if you've taken nothing out. You might have a more swing trading strategy where you're getting in in that consolidation and you're not scalping anything out. And if that's what you're doing, understand that has probably a lower percentage win rate, but when you do win, it's going to be bigger. So ensure that you are grading it versus the trade that you are making. I can't pretend if there's a scalp trade, that looks terrible. Why would you sit there $2 in the money and not take it when it shows you the range? But it's not a scalp trade. It's a trade where I'm holding for the range into the bottom. Now, here's where things always get tricky when you're judging. What if, your, what if your, your strategy is something you don't take very often? And I say this all, this is one thing I'll say all the time, and actually why, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this uh, lesson uh, for today. We actually ended the show sort of talking about this. So there's something called like a uh, short, short sell restricted bounce play. So a stock's down over, say, 10%. I'm looking for it to make a defined low at a key price and then take a reversal trade. Well, the last time I traded one of these happened to be two weeks ago or so on Tilray, and then today I'm trading one on Pacific Biosciences. Now, here is, here is the key when you're grading your day and at the end of the day. Now, regardless of how much I'm up or down on the session, it doesn't matter. Like if I give everything back on Pacific Biosciences that I made today, the only thing I should care about is what was my P&L risk to award on Pack B versus the Tilray trade that I made SSR two weeks ago? Because that's a very specific strategy. And again, it's just about what is your risk to award. In this particular case, uh, it makes a bottom at 150. I tried that one, I'd already tried one at a bottom at 160. So I have one trade for a three cent hit where I'm trying to make a move into 175. That's about a three to one trade if it makes a move. And then I take a second shot at it. What matters here when you're grading this trade is it's a very specific setup. There is a big difference. I'm just gonna use an example here. 
Like, let's say I went long Apple at an even dollar level, which I did do today. There is a big difference between taking a bounce off support in a big cap name and taking a long in a stock down 45% because it's SSR and looking for that setup. I can't grade those two trades against each other. Are they both buying the dip? Technically, yes. Are they buying off the low of the day? Technically, yes. But they don't behave in the same manner. I'm going to hold this to a different range. I'm going to wait for a different setup or price on the pack B. It's going to be a much more depressed stock without as many fundamental buyers when you're doing it on Tilray or Pacific Biosciences. So it's really important when you're grading both the wins and the losses on that setup that it's against a similar trade. And I'll take it a step further. When we go back over to that breakout on NVIDIA, I would say that the breakout in NVIDIA, the first idea that I came up with and showed you guys today, that's vastly different from taking a breakout in, say, GameStop. So it's not to sit there and say every single trade is completely unique. You will find overlapping setups. There's no question about that. But you've got to look within your own strategy, find the setups that you can go back and check and say they look the same, they behave the same, I can grade them all together and then lump those into a category. Because I can tell you this, the single biggest issue for most traders in terms of getting profitability that I've seen over 20 years, it comes down to not putting risk to, or capital towards the things that work for them. That's the number one problem. And if you're not actually breaking down your strategies as different, then you're just going to see, oh, I was up on NVIDIA today, but one was a breakout and another one was like a dip buy, and you had a great breakout trade that was 80% of your gains and 20% of the risk, but the dip buy that you bought was maybe 20% of your gains, but you actually risked three times that you did on the breakout. So you're up on it, and then that's, you're leaving it at that. And that doesn't work. Because clearly one of the other trade, one trade's better than the other. And what that's telling you is you might want to drop the other one and double the risk on the one that's more efficient. And if you're not getting that information, then you're wasting what the market is telling you. And the worst thing you can do is when the market's telling you something is really good that you are doing, you want to put more into it. And if you don't pay attention to each individual strategy, journaling helps, marking down your winner, do whatever you do, make a sticky note for your setups. Use an, I use an iPad for all of my ideas and go back over them, rehearse them on the train, whatever you got to do. Go over each and indiv individual strategy and see what's working for you. Put more capital to the ones that do and ensure that you're risking down on the others. You can always be developing new things. But if you can't grade the trades based on their own merits or each individual merits, you're going to find yourself in trouble. That's is the lesson of the day brought to you by Real Trading. <laughs> uh, shout out to the Neil, eloquent, informative, and awesome as always. Thank you very much for that, Neil. Uh, I'm just going to go over some trade ideas for myself that I've been looking at while Neil was dropping hot lines. We'll send it to Adair, and then we'll start the lesson. So, Ram Ram, if you could. Uh, we are moving up here on AAPL, and I see a lot of people have different feelings about what Apple is doing at the moment. I looked over to the Katina man while Neil was dropping hot lines, and I said, what do you think about 170 on AAPL? And he's like, it's like 160 on TSLA. So I'm looking for a 170 pop and then drop. Let's see if we reject the whole dollar level. We kind of kind of danced with 169 a little bit, but that wasn't the same thing. This is not the $10 level. So I'm going to be looking at 170, but I also want to tell you that I am looking at 170.50 as well. And that it's owing to the volume weighted average price because VWAP still well above about 50, 60 pennies or so above the whole dollar level right now at 170. So nice recovery from Apple off that 168 and a quarter low. It coming into 170 right now, but I still feel this is a short until otherwise proven, okay? So we'll continue to see here. It is four minutes of uninterrupted green candles now on the five minute chart. Uh, so yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what we get there. The other one, everybody's talking about this one. WISA, W-I-S-A. And so I was just talking to Nicole Harris in the chat. I'm like, I don't have levels on it. I'd like to get it on a dip trade. Uh, ideally a whole dollar level. 
and look what it did. It dipped into seven, but you'd have to give this literally 50 pennies worth of room because you ended up getting the closing print right above seven, but look where the wick went to, man. It went down into the mid 60s. So you're gonna have to give this an awful amount of room. Otherwise, you're gonna have to have amazing timing. Here we go again, right through eight, eight and a third incoming, likely eight and a half by the time I'm done this sentence. And we're likely gonna halt again to the high side. Last time around, we did halt at $7.85 or thereabouts. We saw up 300. And 70%, this one reverse split a few days ago. There isn't a headline really. I mean, here it is, if you want it. Um, the company's unit, WISA Association, has executed its fourth five-year WISA e-licensing agreement with a fourth major HDTV um, projection TV brand. WISA e-license allows the brand to integrate WISA e-software into its products, therefore, thereby offering consumers wireless, immersive, yada, yada, yada. You guys get it. That's vis-a-vis -vis one of our sponsors, Ben Zing. Uh, anyway, keep your eye on WISA if you are small cap inclined, but make sure you're managing risk because it's awfully dangerous, Adair. Yeah, right now I am in some trades. I wish I had a better transition for that. I am in two trades right now. And one of them is basically flat, which we'll get to in a moment. And one of them is starting to move in the direction I want, which is the SQQQs. I was mentioning I like this range. Sharif was shouting out this range. Sharif made the most of this range. I had a good entry initially for this. Then I panicked and got out, and we ended up going back up, right? So this is what I like to call an avenge trade. I'm getting in because I like the levels. I wanted to short this, but I wasn't aggressive enough. Here, though, I see what we're seeing. I like what we're seeing. I said seeing too many times in that last sentence, but that's okay. <laughs> I like, I have liked this all day, this bottom at 1137. So I initially started to get in 1138, added at 1137, happy with the position I have. It was a planned addition because I didn't want to get the, the whole kit and caboodle in right away. I wanted to see what we did, right? Happy with the price I have, happy with the areas I have. I'm going to take out five pennies with half the shares, saving a piece for the dream. That dream is going to be up here in 1147s, 1148s. So right now I'm happy if we break uh, below here, into that 11.35, 11.34, that's when we're gonna have to take a look and cut it short. This is pretty tight risk reward. I'm aiming for no more than, than five pennies of risk because I want about five penny reward for the smaller part of my position. I'm comfortable with that. Also, quickly as well, uh, Stressel, instead of stress law in the TSLL, it's gonna be Stressel um, because <laughs> there's two L's. So here I am, I'm at uh, 6.39. I'm happy with where I'm at right now. If it would like to move it either way, I'd love that because right now we are stagnant, but I like this area because this is previous support. Support can become resistance. I like the look on this so far. I think we can go lower. I'm noticing that we have this bounce here, so I'm going to get part of the position out 35s, save a piece for the dream at 32s. That's the look here for TSLL. Hopefully it's not going to be too stressful for us in TSLL. <laughs> All right. I want to point out PDD here. Um, for whatever reason, it decided that 112.70 was not the price it wanted to be trading at. So it popped up into 115.45 in one one minute candle. Uh, it's retracing down now uh, below 114. I don't have a headline on why PDD just jumped up big there off that 112 and three quarters into 115 and a half. So PDD doing something anyway, retracing now once we get the headline for PDD. If we get the headline, I will share that with you. But good call out um, to the individual who mentioned PDD there um, popping up midday and on volume. This one one minute candle had over a quarter million shares traded in that one one minute candle. So there was a volume to support the move, but it is, as you can see now, breaking down below 114. Looks like it's headed back south. So I don't know if this was a fat finger or whatever, what the hell is going on here, but something's afoot with PDD. Now, I, I mentioned I'm looking at Apple. I won't be able to trade this because we're going to have to start the lesson now. Um, where is, oh, there it is. Um, yeah, let me just load up that bad boy and we're going to get the RSI reversal lesson started. Okay, so we're talking about small caps all week. And so today's lesson should be viewed from that lens. When we're talking about RSI today and everything else we talk about this week, view it from the lens of small cap trading, okay? We dive into the relative strength index today and it's power to identify potential reversals in momentum, especially for small cap stocks. RSI can be a valuable tool, but remember it's just one piece of the puzzle. So let's not rely on it too, too much. 
Just before we get into the actual nitty gritty of the lesson, let's just explain to the newer viewers what RSI is, what relative strength index is. And essentially at its most fundamental, at its most basic, it's a technical indicator that measures the momentum of a stock price by analyzing the recent price changes. It has a range on its scale from zero to 100. And the zero to 30 area is what we call the oversold territory. And when the stock is trading in that range, it potentially indicates a buying opportunity. Uh, conversely, that 70 to 30 area on that zero to 100 scale is considered the overbought territory and suggesting a possible sell-off could be ensuing. And so here's a basic RSI graph. You have the price on the top indicated by the Japanese candlestick bars, and then you have a line graph on the bottom, which is the RSI. And then you'll have dotted lines at that 70 area and another dotted line at that 30 area to, to denote those overbought and oversold territory on the chart. So we're talking about RSI reversal today. What exactly is that, right? So the key to using RSI for momentum trading is to identify reversals. Here's what to look for. The first thing we're going to talk about is what we call the overbought reversal. So this is when the RSI reaches overbought territory. Again, that's above a 70 print and then starts trending downward. So the RSI starts trending downward, whether below 70 or from wherever it was, 80, 90, it starts trending downward without a corresponding drop in price. So RSI starts making lower highs, but you don't necessarily see lower highs on the price, okay? This might be signaling weakening momentum, and it could be a potential selling opportunity. What we're describing here is RSI price divergence. That works for both the long and the short, depending on where the RSI is hanging out. We just talked about the overbought reversal. Now, this is the oversold reversal. Same thing goes here. If the RSI dips into the oversold territory, which is below 30, and then starts to rise, even though the price remains low and the, there's no corresponding rise in the price, it could indicate a potential buying opportunity as the momentum might be shifting upwards. Again, this is an oversold reversal, talking about RSI price divergence. And here it is illustrated graphically. Look at the top. The top is the price action. You can see here, we're making higher highs on the price, but when you look at the RSI's highs, they're making lower highs. So what we have here is an RSI price divergence. There's different types of divergence. There's bullish divergence and bearish divergence. When the price is making higher highs and the RSI is making lower highs, this is a bearish divergence. Conversely, when the price is making lower highs and the RSI is making higher highs, that's a bullish divergence. Okay, so keep that in more higher lows, excuse me, not higher highs, higher lows. So that is what we're talking about when we're talking about the RSI reversal strategy. So why is this useful though? What can we use it for? So RSI helps us identify situations where the price might be diverging from its recent trend. For example, an overbought RSI, overbought, so above 70, with a flat price, so we're not printing higher highs and higher lows, suggests the buying pressure may be fading even before the price starts making lower highs and lower lows. Price is flat, RSI is coming down, something to look out for. This is why it is useful. We look for price action, RSI divergence, okay? But it's not the end all and be all. So how can we combine RSI and our analysis of it with other tools, okay? Price action, we just talked about how to look at price action and compare that with RSI, so I'm not gonna repeat that. But volume, the other thing you should be looking for here. So high trading volume alongside an RSI reversal can indicate a stronger momentum shift. So it's another one of those other boxes that you put beside your checklist that you can check off to see on the balance of the evidence where everything is pointing. But that's not the only thing you can be looking at. When RSI and price action start to diverge at key areas of support and resistance, it gives more credence. So consider support and resistance levels on the price chart, a reversal, Near a key level can add weight to your RSI signal. So make sure to keep that. And here's a perfect case in point. 
Thank you, Adara, for adding this in again. There you see here, example of the RSI really diverging at the key area of support. Putting it all together, so how do we use it all together? Let's, so let's imagine a small cap stock experiences a sharp price increase like we're seeing on Wisa, pushing the RSI above 80. However, the price stalls, let's say at nine bucks, and the RSI starts trending downwards. This might be a sign of weakening momentum and a potential short-term selling opportunity. Obviously with Wisa, at least on this floor, you're gonna have to secure shorts so it's not just as easy as you know, hitting short 860, which I see right now, is the HOD on WISA. And yeah, that's it. So remember a couple of, uh, couple of key points here to remember. RSI is just a tool. Always consider other factors like price action, volume, support and resistance. You can even use moving average, convergence, divergence, stochastics, Bollinger Bands, whatever you wanna use. Just make sure that you're using them well together and you've practiced that. And there's no guarantees. Markets can absolutely be unpredictable and make sure to practice good risk management strategies, which obviously includes the use of stop losses, Adair. Yeah, we, we love risk management here. Mm -hmm. uh, stop loss gang over here. Stop loss gang, Trader baby. TV live. Um, so yeah, happy. Th thank you so much for going over that one, um, <laughs> Sharif. Also, I think too, what's interesting is I'm seeing um, some mentions of AMC. So uh, let's see what what we can watch here. Let's see what, what what's on schedule to be showing in the theater, the theater here at AMC. <laughs> this is a nice look. We're up almost 10%. Bit of a double top here though at 724 in the five. However, we are still holding this 9 EMA pretty well. And this to me is an interesting area, this 272 area. Bit of a double top here with, with topping tail candles to match both times, but we held it better the second time. So are we gonna use this area of support now as we skirt back towards 272? Skirt, skirt. Are we gonna, skirt, skirt. Um, yeah, I just, I enjoyed Sharif saying that, so I'm gonna <laughs> kick out of that. But yeah, so I think, I think this 272 in all seriousness could be a level. Speaking of stocks that have had interesting journeys, let's look at GME, and by that I mean meme stocks, but I didn't wanna say meme stock, but I just did, so that's cool. Um, GME up about three and a half percent right now here. Uh, and this one, a little bit, we have this continued upward momentum here, kind of a similar look to AMC. But in this one, I wouldn't say it's really as much of a double top look. I think we are continuing to try to go higher. However, I mentioned 272 on, G on AMC. What I like with GME is this 1032 level. That was a clear top earlier, right? Look where we find support, 1032. I like it. It's not one that I think I'll get involved with, but I did want to cover that because some people were mentioning these ones. So I think this is a nice look. This is great. Hold my beer because I was making that joke about seeing the movie saying Planet of the Apes movie. Like AMC Apes, I have to I have to give it a round of applause because that was fantastic. Thank you. Hold my beer. Um, I think that's a fantastic, fantastic look there. Also, um, someone asking what I think of gold. A couple of people are asking what I think of gold. I love Let's gold. Take a look. GLD. On, you don't know that from Austin Powers, gold member. Oh yeah, gold member. Hello. I've I've seen like the I've seen the one where he raps to Mr. Evil. I know that. I I at one oh, point. Oh, that's such a good I one. I could do yes. that whole rap at one when point. When he's in, in jail, life. right? Yeah. When he's in jail with Mini Me. Yeah. That's so good. Just the two of us. I like literally. I can it's somewhere in my mind us. that whole rap lives Just and exists, the two but. Of us. You and I. Oh, you do it better than me. That's so but, good. But yeah, this gold, this gold is trying to have a breakout here. Sorry I like this. That. Around this um, 221.35, you're trying to make new highs of days on the GLD. We had a massive topping tail candle earlier here at that area, but gold saying, nah, 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 I want to go higher. So let's see if it does this. I think I like these higher lows here throughout the day. We're slightly positive on the day. I think that break above on the gold ETF of that this area will be key, but I, I think we are setting up for a flat top break. And we don't have a flat top break button as Sharif was lamenting yesterday, but I think we could have a flat top break moment here on GLD. Also, my trades are more or less flat. I'm just kind of waiting for them to decide what they want to do. So I have nothing to report on that end. All right, I'm just looking here at um, AT&T, not that I want to trade AT&T or there's any news catalyst on the day, but our friend Elon in the chat, I know his name's Elon, uh, wanted me to have a look. He goes on to say, hi Sharif, would you say AT&T in the daily chart, a confluence, you knew what I was doing there, of RSI bottom, bullish divergence, hammer candle, and Bollinger Bands? Holy Elon, how many technical indicators do you want me to look at? But you're bang on, Elon. We are touching the Bollinger Band on the lower side of the band, so you're, you're right there. We are be well below 30 on the RSI on AT&T. Uh, as well, we're like in that 20, below 20, it looks like 19 or 18 or thereabouts. 
and a hammer candle. We're putting in a hammer candle right now. We haven't closed on the day though, Elon, but good observation. I'd like to see this a little bit higher or I would have liked the longer wick to the bottom, but you know, you don't get to be choosy with this type of thing. Uh, good look for you. I don't know where you're seeing support though. So where is 16 here as a level of support? What I do see it as, as a previous level of resistance. And that takes us all the way back into October 31st when we couldn't break through that 16, then we ended up breaking it late November. But I guess maybe you could make the argument that 16, 16 over here was an interesting area of support. This takes us back to January 11th. But I see your point, Elon. I like how you're thinking. I like how you're looking for multiple checkpoints, right? Lower end of the Bollinger Band, RSI, support and resistance. You're doing all the right things here, man. I'm really impressed with how you're seeing this. Um, I don't know if this name, though, is really the name to be looking at here. I don't know. I personally haven't looked at at and in quite some time, so I'm not really familiar with its price action. But shout out to you, man. A great look there. Let me know how that trade goes for you uh, if you end up taking it. Now, quickly, I want to talk about Apple because I was really interested in shorting Apple at this area here, but we had to start the lesson, so I didn't take the, the, the short. So when I started... When I was done the lesson, I started looking at where it was. Well, lo and behold, it got into that 169 and a quarter. Well, what is that 169 and a quarter? Surprise, surprise, it's actually a form of a resistance level that we just dealt with at around noon. We moved into 169 and a quarter, then tanked, went down to 168 and a quarter. In fact, we went broke down uh, right into 168 and a quarter within about five minutes. So when we came back, to 169 as a quarter this time as support rather than resistance, surprise, surprise, we held. So we're putting in higher highs and higher lows on the dead one on the day. I gotta tell you though, that 170 or that 170.50 is still an interesting level for me on AAPL to take the short. It's either gonna be the whole dollar for me or the volume weighted average price. That's what that 170.50 is. Uh, it wasn't just uh, the 50 point level that I was talking about there. That's where VWAP's hanging out on my chart. So nice, um, I, guess, I guess maybe recovery off the lows for Apple, but I'm still looking short on this name for now. Yeah, I mean, uh, Michael Jean was asking here about BTC. Feels like the dump might be over. Yeah, I have, I've had my eye on this one because I've been interested in trading some of these crypto names. And yeah, Mara looking nice too, but let me, here it is, pull up. BTC on the five minutes. So this is, yeah, I see what you mean. We had this slightly lower low here. Then we kind of try to see these curls back to the upside here. We're just, uh, we're just shy of that 62, uh, 60, 62,200 level, sorry guys, numbers. Um, so I think this will be nice, but generally too, it is worth noting, this isn't, we haven't made a new high above these earlier areas, right? So I think breaking above this 62.3 would be nice. What if we do 62.5? I think basically in order for me, I think to see a really nice continuous move back up on Bitcoin, I, I kind of am curious to see it reclaim these previous areas it failed, right? Because that's why I like the short earlier in CLSK because we had these lower highs. So I think in order to start eclipsing those and going back to the upside, I think that could be a nice look for BTC. And I'll also look at Mara because I think that is, uh, I think very apt if we're going to talk about a BTC related name. Mara is maybe one of, Mara and Coinbase, if Mara fails this, this uh, VWAP again, I'm going to take this short. I was talking about this earlier. Mara has generally had lower highs. We've had generally lower lows. Bitcoin on this five minute, I was just talking about how we were in year 22. Now we just broke below 62.1. So I think we're, we're struggling a little bit here with BTC. I'm interested in this 1450 short. I'm going to keep an eye on this. But yeah, I think Bitcoin could curl back up there. That being said, Michael, I just think we need to keep saying the move above these other highs. Again, not, not advice, just my, just one person's, one new trader's take on the chart. Also, I think Carson in the chat was clarifying he meant G-O-L-D, not G-L-D. So I apologize. I thought you meant gold like gold and not gold like Barrett gold but Barrett gold actually looking nice here right now we're, we're kind of skirting off the 90 MA the one thing that concerns me for this one is look at these topping tail candles we have we start getting these very bearish candles Wick here around 12 30 doing the wick shimmy dance as Sharif was just saying so I think I think seeing a bullish candle kind of dance up here would be nice we are still above that 90 MA but I think these three bearish candles in a row especially with these failed wicks of these wicks of failed buying story in the upside I think that could get a skosh dicey that's something i'd want to keep an eye on also i'm out of tsll this was a pretty small trade i basically was noticing that we were struggling a little bit more 
uh, with this area with Tesla than I thought we would. And I was like, you know what, Adara, we're getting chop and churn. We're getting tighter. You wanted this as a range. It's not a range anymore. Get out. So I got out. Please just punch. SQQs were still in, but the TQQs are getting tighter and tighter, much like what I was seeing with Tesla. Or not the TQ, the Qs in general. So I'm trying to, to play this as well. Michael Moore also. Uh, good morning. Would you mind going over Apple? Yeah, I am not. I would say Sharif is much more of an expert of the dead one than I am. <laughs> I know you are an Apple whisperer. You're a ghost whisperer because Apple's the dead one. Oh, but wow. Yeah, so, so AAPL is a fascinating one, though. I don't the, know if I want that moniker. Oh, I don't sorry, want anything I'm visiting me. Oh, I see. For a second, I thought you were being serious. And I was like, but yeah, so I think, I think what's cool is I like how we're writing this 90 MA. And I mean, Sharif's take on Apple, you've been watching this one way more than I have today. But look at this. We had this kind of range area here earlier. Yeah. So I know you were watching this, this pop up here. Mm -hmm. Then we get to 170 almost, or I think, did we touch 170? Once, and then we yeah. reject and we bounce again off this 169.40, which was near the high of the range earlier. So I think there's something with this previous area of resistance becoming pseudo support. I agree. On AAPL to me. Yep. I hope that helps, Michael Moore. Also, South Billity saying, please, just papaya. I like that. I'm going to have to try that. Switch that up sometimes. That Michael Moore, the documentary maker? I was gonna, is it Bowling for Columbine? Yeah. Or what is it? what was the other one? Um, she keeps interrupting us, eh? I know. Nosy little Siri. Goodness gracious. Uh, Did I tell you that I, uh, I got my old man, oh, well, my parents, uh, a Google speaker and like that nest. You did not tell me this. So listen to this, okay? And I, I always go on the weekend. You know I always go up there. And um, every single week I go, it's in the kitchen. It's unplugged. He's like, it keeps listening to me. It talks when I don't talk to it. And it's making noise. He's like, at w one oh. time, I get, he gets up super early, like at four in the morning to make a coffee. And then I started talking to him and he freaked out. I'm like, Bob, like you just, you know, that's it activates sweet, sometimes, yeah. yeah. He, he's like convinced it's listening to him. But I think a lot of people would be convinced with him too. Uh, BPI, are you talking to me? No, no. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people uh, believe that as well. So yeah. you know, I'm not trying to mock my old man or anything. But no, it's just yeah. sweet. Like he just doesn't, I understand. He doesn't want an eavesdropping on him, right? Like we can. No, he, he doesn't want anyone listening from Google because everybody's interested in his business. He's so, you know. Like, he wants to protect trade secrets. <laughs> Come on. All right, guys, let's get uh, right back into business here. People were asking me what's going on with Fisker. Shout out to you. Um, who was that that was asking me? Benny A. Ben A. Um, look, yes, I see Fisker up 27, 26% yet again. Funny thing is, Katina, man, that Magna got downgraded by Evercore ISI. And anybody who's been following uh, Magna and Fisker and all that knows that Magna makes cars for Fisker in Europe. Magna, a Canadian company owned by the Stronics, like right up the road from here where we are in Aurora. Uh, but that's, that's the issue there. Now, what I'm seeing is there could be a positive catalyst here yesterday, later on, Fisker signs new dealer partner in Miami and adds new dealer partners in Europe. Okay, you know, you know that's a bit of an overhead cost because you're using dealerships now rather than direct to consumer, but I guess, you know, direct to consumer is not working. Why not try the old way? Anyway, I don't know what's going on with Fisker. It's six pennies, six and three quarter pennies right now. Um, but that's a look. It's a good day. 26 and three quarter percent, 27 percent or thereabouts. Let's go back into AAPL because this is the trade that I've been focusing on the majority of the day. And um, it came right back into 169 and a quarter. In fact, it held it to the T to the T and then bounced right back up. So that former area of support, Michael Moore, um, of 169 and a quarter resistance, excuse me, acts as support this time around. I'm talking about this exact area right here. This is what we call a crest and this is what we call a trough. So the crest peaks at exactly the same area that the trough bottoms. That's an area of previous uh, resistance now support. Let's see though, what we do at 170, I've been waiting for that 170 level to come in, uh, either 170 or 170.50 because VWAP is at 170.50 and I'm looking to short AAPL again. Now it is a little bit rangy now, a little bit in between that key area of support at 169 and a quarter and that key level of resistance at 170. So in no man's land, in my opinion right now, is AAPL, so I'm gonna wait for it uh, to establish a level, and then we're, uh, we're going to figure out what we're going to do there. No worries, Ben. Thank you for uh, joining Adara and I today. Taxi driver, Tilray, 420 by 420. I like the way you think, brother. I like the way you think. 420 Bud Monster might agree with you. Yeah, 420 Bud Monster would be all over that. 
Um, if he's not the number one shareholder already, so let's find out. Uh, let's look at TLRY and see what's popping off on the, well, here's the daily. Um, and I got to tell you, we haven't been at 420 on Tilray since um, last December. We got a nice pop up there uh, last December on Tilray into what? What was that? $5 and 12 pennies, $5, 10 pennies thereabouts. So I don't know about we get 420 by, four, uh, by 420, and especially this nice big move down here. Now, what I did see, though, was it was the first time. No, that's not accurate. I was going to say that it was the first time we closed above the 200 period moving average, but we did that here in August. I guess maybe it's the first time in a while that we closed decidedly above the 200. But look at that. We give the 200 right back up. We move into three bucks, and then we tank back down to 180. So still lower highs and lower lows. I got to tell you the truth, man. It's still not a good look for Tilray. Let's see what we get. Um, where is RSI here? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be using RSI a lot more now. We're going to put it on uh, all these, uh, just like we're using the, um, the, what are they called again? Pivot points on some of the side charts. So yeah, tougher, tougher look here for uh, RSI. I don't know if we make it up to 420. We're going to need definitely a catalyst for that. All right, let's find out what our friend Wisa is doing. We were looking at Wisa earlier. Okay, so it's kind of giving up the ghost a little bit now. Sell to seven bucks. And it seems like it's bottoming out maybe here at six and a half, doing some um, wicks into that six and a half dollar level. Look, for a six dollar name, it's awfully spready. 10 pennies, 15 pennies at times. Right now it's a little bit tighter at five, but make sure you're practicing sound risk management with this one. Otherwise, you may not have an account to trade with tomorrow and make sure if you're not gonna you know have tight stops and I would suggest you don't have tight stops on this because obviously rangy drop the position size a little bit guys okay we don't need to have huge huge position size here a couple of other things before I go on what's going on Katina man yeah the Katina man agrees with what I'm saying uh, other thing I wanted to mention we have a new small cap gapper du jour BSGM just started moving BSGM let's look at this one popped off big there um, during the open and then basically tank below the volume weighted average price not tradable. Then look at these two five minute candles over here, both with more than a quarter million shares per five minute candle. So that's about a million, uh, about half a million shares there in 10 minutes that's traded on this bad boy. What is the deets on this? So 17 and a quarter million dollar market cap. The float is seven and a quarter million shares. Is there a headline? Da, 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 da. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Nothing from today. No, I don't see a headline. It's just saying that it's moving, but nothing uh, specific with the name. Anyway, is this? No, it's not halted. It's trading at 192 right now. Looks like $2 incoming on this name. You're not going to catch me chasing it. It's going to have to come down into 160, 150. I'm going to have to get it off a key support level. Otherwise, I'm not ch chasing this name. BSGM up 70% now. Good move up there midday. Yeah, I'm just trying to try to get into this um, Papa Powell talk at 115. So people mentioned oh, it in the chat. Oh, I think you have to oh. register for this one, which is weird. Because it's like, I, I was trying to find a way to go, and it's like, oh, register for this Washington Forum virtually. And I was like, I can't just click a link. So, and yeah, this isn't for in-person either. This is for virtually. So, je ne sais pas. I'm going to have to figure out how to get into that because I would definitely be interested in this. Right now, though, I am interested in the queues, figuring out what they want to do. I am getting a little bit nervous here in my SQQQs because the queues themselves, the older sister of the SQQQs, we move from a range to this kind of chop and turn to the upside. So I do definitely do not want to be long in a, a short inverse ETF, AKA I don't want to be short the queues right now. So that's why I'm trying to get out here around 40s, 41s. I know we can reach that area. Right now we just want to exit the trade because I am feeling like it's getting a bit dicey here, but I don't have any reason to leave. Like I said, my impetus is this break below 35. So we're going to be watching out here. I just, I think if I'm losing confidence in the trade, I don't want to, overstay my welcome. That being said, I'm so happy I got out of Tesla where I did here. I got out because I was noticing we weren't really able to break. I was initially interested in 35s and then a piece of the dream. We ended up getting out at 36s, 636, because I was like, Adara, this range is getting tighter. We could be breaking out. TSLA was kind of breaking out, so I wanted to be cog cognizant of that. But yeah, some nice look. 
Um, congrats to anybody in that Tesla long for that breakout. But now we're getting near that earlier high. This was an area that was high in the pre-market. We tried to make it again earlier today, that 158 and change. I'm going to be watching my TSLL to see what we do there because we might have to, to take this short once again. Tesla, I think, really beholden to certain key levels today for whatever reason. I don't need to know why Tesla's doing these levels, but I will watch and see that it's doing it, and I might want to get involved. So there we go, TSLL. Tammy in the chat was mentioning Mara short. And yeah, Mara right now, I said I was watching it at VWAP. We broke above VWAP, so nice look there. But now we're, we're kind of seeing this chop and churn around this earlier area. This is actually the pre-market low thereabouts, that 1465. So I want to watch this. Bitcoin also getting a bit of a bearish candle here on the five as well. Oh, I just closed my Bitcoin chart. What and happened to, to show that. Bitcoin? So that's okay. We can reopen that. That's all good. That's what the computers are for. But yeah, very weird. You have to like log in to watch this this event today apparently huh. with those governors so i'm gonna have to find a way uh, i'm gonna have to bamboozle instead of bamboozling my way into a trade <laughs> bamboozling my way into the fed powell speech because it doesn't have like just that. the normal online link on youtube but yeah so btc if i i'm gonna pull that up again sorry guys i accidentally closed it i had a fat finger moment there if you will but yeah look like we have this green candle and then this candle opens in the midst of the candle. So a bit of a, a gap down here oh. on this five minute down. And I also said I wanted to see us make higher highs here. So we made that first higher high above that 62.3, but look, 62.5, flat top. I'm not gonna assume anything right now, but I like this move to the downside. I might take a skosh of a short position here on one of my crypto names. That being said, if I'm gonna choose between Mar and CleanSpark, it's gonna be CleanSpark because this was resistance earlier. Enough, to, enough yapping, more punching in. So there we go. We're gonna get involved in a smaller short position there. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm watching AMD because it's uh, basically accumulating for whatever reason at 163.75 and it just rejected that level. Here we go on AMD. It's a good day for AMD, 2% to the good. Who could disrespect that? Um, but let, the truth of the matter is we kept accumulating. We kept wicking into 163.75 and then down we go again but we're not really rejecting it with any vigor here. So I'm trying to figure out um, this trade. I'm, you know, I, I seldom trade AMD. You see the big kahunas trading AMD a lot. I don't feel like I have a good beat on this name, but what I see on the chart here is definite resistance at the three quarter dollar level. Let's see what it does at 50. 50 doesn't stand in its way. Here comes 48. Where's VWAP on AMD? Uh, let's find out exactly where it is. It's at 163 and a quarter. Okay, so the volume weighted average price, 163 and a quarter. Uh, we'll keep eyes on that. Oh my God, people in the chat. I'm not even gonna break that. Anyway, 163 and a quarter, we just dipped down into 163.40. Uh, now down below 2% now is AMD. The other trade that uh, is going on at the moment is this AAPL, 169 again here on Apple. As it rejects, it doesn't quite make it up into 170 this time around. The best it could do was at 169.80, and then down we go again. Initially, we did have some support at that quarter dollar level. I'm talking about 169 and a quarter, but right down we go into 169 yet again. Last time around, I don't feel the whole dollar really was a respected level. I don't know, maybe I am wrong about that. I think I am wrong about that. It broke down initially. Um, yeah, this is an interesting area here on Apple. If I get long here, I can just defend it through the break of the whole dollar level. I'm long Apple here. I'm going to defend this down into the break of 169. Let's see what we get. Yeah, I was just um, gonna responding. Break while I, right while I'm talking. Pardon? Nothing. Oh, okay, sorry. I didn't know if you were still talking. <laughs> okay, I wasn't trying to get you off there. Um, Greg R. saying, um, how much is Adara made today trading? I'm flat right now, basically, but I, I'm okay with that. It was flat pretty much yesterday. It was down like less than a cup of McDonald's coffee, so I uh, was pleased to punch about that. Right now, though, happy I punched into that CLSK long. I like this double top area. I also like that we were seeing something similar in Bitcoin, and to me, between Mara and CleanSpark, if I'm seeing the same thing in both, I'm gonna have to go with CleanSpark because CleanSpark, that's a level I've been playing all day. I'm gonna give this to about 50s because 50s to me, so we're give this about 20 pennies. We're gonna see what happens here. Um, also, this this SQQQs, I it's getting it's getting dicey at this point. Okay. It's kind of being the dead one for me. I'm noticing that top and turn in the queues, and it's reflecting in the SQQQs at this point. I'm okay taking a couple pennies. I just think I need to extricate myself from this trade because I'm not. 
you know, as committed to it as much anymore. Like, you know what I mean? I, I guess with it not doing a lot, I just kind of like, we've got to let her let her do her thing, 21. Bitcoin getting this, this little candle to the upside here. So don't love being in a crypto short right now. That being said, I'm going to stay until I have a reason to leave. Right now, I don't have a reason to leave. We're going to breathe, stay chill, um, and, and see what happens here. Um, pop it for Powell says, <laughs> great style of mine. I guess like Papa Powell there. Uh -huh. Yeah, the market, a little bit of okay, that. Okay, um, okay. Papa Powell is speaking at 115. So, and I'm going to have to see if I can get my RVSP into this because you have to sign up for some reason. So, so um, good times. We, yeah, we're, CLSK, we're probably going to have to leave soon. Hughes, figure out what you want to do here. That would be really fun. FOMO knocking on AMC door with a little door emoji says Tobias Hernandez. Based on what I saw of that chart earlier, I don't disagree. This was a massive move up. Let's see how much further it moved. Yeah, so we're now up 11%. Last time I looked, we were just shy of 10%. This is this is a nice little trek to the upside. And I think, too, you're just kind of buying the dips. It has a really nice look. The one dip that was a little bit potentially more sus or sketchier looking was going to be this one that we had at... 12 o'clock even, because look at that big candle to the downside. However, look where we closed, or that wick to the downside, sorry, but we closed around that 266, which was that previous area of support. So I think this is, or sorry, resistance. So resistance is becoming support. I think overall, nice look at AMC. Looks like there's some, some promising um, films to watch there. Someone was saying, I think it was a Hold My Beer saying Planet of the Apes on there. So Planet that of the movie Apes, Apes. Civil War is out too. Oh, I want to see that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. A lot of people were saying that it wasn't that good. It was kind of like a movie with no point and just a whole lot of like bad news. I don't care. I, I want to see exactly what it's all about. They kept like... I, I kept getting all these advertisements on YouTube about it, so it kind of got me interested. Uh, long AAPL tens were looking to uh, looking to hold that 169 level, but shout out to Tisha Perkins. Shout out to you. You called that six level Tisha on Wisa, and look at that six level hold to the penny. I think it did actually hold to the penny on that last little dip down. Let's just verify that. The low on this candle was, excuse me here, as my headset has died now, Ram Ram, so you're gonna have to talk to uh, Derek. Six, six dollar and one cent on that exactly. So wow, what a hold at six by Wisa, right back into seven, uh, got up into 7.10 there before dipping right back down into that six and three quarters. Wisa's been a monster. It is on a bit of a downtrend though, Tisha, I gotta tell you. I mean, you see the lower lows coming in, you see the lower highs. It could be a bull flag on a wider time frame, owing to that big move up and then, you know, a little bit of a down move here. Uh, we'll have to wait and see exactly what we get here on Wisa, but great move up there uh, for whoever took that at the lows. Um, let's see what else we got. Uh, yeah, Apple still, you know, below my uh, beak wetter, but we're in uh, the money on it. Go EV just showed up again. Okay, so this one was basically tanking all day after that big move up, and so we put in a topping tail candle at a quarter at 11, and we hadn't been above the volume weighted average price ever since, um, say, 11 o'clock on a closing basis. Now, the volume starting to increase again. Look at the volume bars and compare it to what we did, say, the entire hour of noon between 12 and 1. Volume's starting to come in. We're above the volume weighted average price. We just took the whole dollar level, but true to form, we find resistance at the $3 level. So we're coming right back down now. Let's see if we can get a close, a break and hold above number one, VWAP. Number two, the whole dollar level. Let's see if GoEV will present us with more trading opportunities. I gotta tell you, in terms of small caps, I'd rather trade GoEV than WISA. Maybe I'll regret saying that, but I gotta tell you, WISA scares the you know what out of me, whereas GoEV, I feel like is a little bit more predictable. I could be wrong, I could be made uh, to eat my words later, but we'll exactly, we'll see what happens. Let's flip back into some, uh, the, the, large, the large caps over here, nothing really doing on that Apple trade quite yet. Oh, interesting trade here. Google just dipped into the volume, volume weighted average price at 154.40 and has put two candles that have defended that level. So rejecting 155 is G-O-O-G-L, goggles as the OB, the one the Kenob likes to call it, but right back into the volume weighted average price holding for now on Google. It hasn't been the the biggest mover, I mean, it's down on the day again. It was up before, it's down a quarter of a percent. We'll see, we'll see what we'll get here on goggles. Yeah, I mean, 
that like I just have to shout this out. Neil in the chat saying you're tearing me apart. We saw which is the reference of anyone seen the room. The Tommy Wiseau classic. I I that that made me laugh. I got a kick out of that. I have so. no idea what's. Oh my gosh! So he like dramatically yeah. yells, "You're tearing me apart, Lisa," uh, which is like a reference to um that the rebel with a oh, okay. rebel without a cause. But anyways, it's it's a mess of a movie. It's like considered okay. one of the best bad movies ever I like made. That. But anyways, I got a kick out of that. Yeah, Neil just put in the chat best bad movie ever, and he said he's not actually trading it, but he had to say it. Cool. So I like the disclaimer there from Neil on Wisa. But yeah, I'm sure Wisa, I hope Wisa isn't tearing too many people apart. But yeah, also, still trying to sign up for this Papa Powell thing. It makes you select your employer and the only options are not employed, self-employed, student, or unemployed, uh, which are <laughs> really helpful. <laughs> uh, so, still working through that res registration. Right now, I'm still in CLSK. I have no reason to leave CLSK right now. We did just have a bearish candle in Bitcoin, but as I've said, I feel like the correlation between CLSK and Bitcoin is not exact, or it's a couple candles over. So I'm using this as my guide and not as my rule. Sure. Gonna, gonna stay in for now. Like I said, I'm watching 50s or 55. We haven't even broken above 50s yet, so I'm keeping chill, keeping calm. Got to SQQs maybe a little bit early, but I'm not gonna. We're not gonna FOMO. You know what I mean? We got involved. I got out because I was noticing we were having harder and harder times. We were getting rangier and rangier, and then or not like tighter and tighter. If we were getting rangier, I'd be happy, but we were getting tighter within that range, and I did not want to be involved. So that's okay. I, I got out of the queues, the SQQs. Please just punch. Or uh, someone was sending me as well. Um, Pop and Short were sending me other phrases you can use as well. So in seventh heaven, um, yeah, tickled pink. Whatever term you want to use, I'm happy about it. Happy I'm out of the trade, uh, ready to see what the next opportunity is in CLSK. Whatever you want to do, uh, yeah, figure it out. I, I just want to know what you're, what you're trying to do there, girl. But I'm comfortable with the short for now. I have no reason to leave. I just want to kind of see some momentum happening there. Sounds good. Okay, cool. Uh, what else we got moving along here? Let's go and have... A look at, uh, okay, we were looking at AMD earlier uh, for that break. So it did, but it was bamboozling. We were talking about that 163.75-ish, 70-ish being a bit of a, a topping level over here. You get movement into 90 and then dips right back into 50. So that isn't predictable for me. What I do see, though, is for whatever reason, this half dollar is being defended. And... There, I guess there's a reason for that in the, in the sense that we put in a bit of a top there earlier on. That takes us about to 1230 when we got into that 163.50, rejected, then ended up taking it about a quarter to one. So the half dollar at 163 holding up for, again, whatever reason here, on uh, AMD. And then we're looking for possibly a nice move into 164. We also had issues with 164 at around uh, a quarter to 12. So, yeah, right back into that level again. AMD, bit of a bamboozler here. Unreal. Okay, so we're going to have to keep uh, eyes on AMD. Say that again? Yeah, I think the market just pumped up here because we're, we're nicely in the money now on AAPL as it bumped up into that 169 a third. We're long tens. Uh, the Piper was asking me, why are you long Apple, bro? I told him, I'm looking for a 169 defend, my man, and that was really it. Now we're about 40 pennies in the money, uh, AAPL on the way to the half dollar. But I'm really looking for a, a, a real level to come in, guys. We need a 170 level, a VWAP touch, something. We've been in no man's land for Apple far too long here in the morning. Uh, at this 169, 168, these levels mean nothing to me. Uh, let's see if we can continue to pump up here, now down 1.9% on AAPL. Uh, the auction, Katina, man, that could be. Let's have a look. I didn't see one at one. Yeah, shout out to Daryl, always uh, doing the housekeeping around here. To be honest with you, I completely forgot to look for any auctions. Allow me a second to make sure that the economic calendar is clear. Barkin's barking? Apparently, it says, oh yeah. <laughs> Yes, Barkin is barking at 1 o'clock. And then Powell, as Adara talked about, will be talking at 1.15. So will Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem for all my Canadians out there. And so will ECB President Christine Lagarde. She'll be dropping hotlines as well. It is uh, a bit of a, a meeting there between central bank governors. I don't know what they're going to talk about. Anyway, 52-week auction was the only auction we had today. That was at 11.30. Came in higher than the previous print. Apple at half dollar I'm covering there. Please just punch with that trade. Nice move off that 169 on AAPL. 
Yeah, so, so here's the thing, is I try to sign up for this event. I sign up, then I click the link, and it takes me to the same page. So have I signed up? This is the most bamboozling experience. I would like to tell the Washington Forum, um, this website, the Wilson Center, whatever center is running this, I don't like them. This has been a really frustrating experience. You sign up, they didn't even have an option for employed. You were either unemployed, self-employed, not employed, or a student. What the hell? Those were your only options. And Bizarre. then you also, all the job options were very limiting as well. So I guess the, Wilt, I don't know who does these Wilson Center forms, but they Do might better. be getting a letter to the editor because I am a skosh confused. And also I click the link they send me and it sends me to the same website. So I want to listen to Fed Powell, but we're going to wait and see here. I am continuing to make Oh, here we go. Oh, so it looks like you didn't even need to register for this. Oh. That's a little upsetting. Jeez. But there we go. The program will, stand, will happen soon. Um, and we're going to wait for it. Also, I did get out of CLSK because CLSK broke above the 50s. Again, this is, you know, not a, not a trade I'm going to complain about. We made this higher high and I got out. Now it looks like we're breaking lower again, but I had to adhere to my principles and, and my rules for the trade. So I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, I can't believe we're starting Fed speak in five minutes. Yeah, that is uh, super interesting there, Adara. Um, anyway, uh, done this Apple trade. I'm keeping an eye to see if we get anything from Barkin or if we get anything obviously still hasn't started yet from Fed Powell. I know Adara will be watching that. Is there a closed caption option on that thing? Can I just hover oh, okay, okay. They haven't shown I thought the yet. thing was, I thought that was a window. I wish. Um, all right, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that because we want to know what they're, what they're going to be saying. I have a news blotter here that will sum, summarize some of the statements there for us. Uh, when they do start uh, speaking. Guys, we are stuck in a range uh, today on the futures, no doubt about that. <clears throat> we took this T triple Q's short earlier on uh, that move into 17,936. That's the high of the day. Uh, we have been putting in, if I can say so, here's some higher lows on the future, okay? So initially uh, at I want to call this the IB low. Shout out to Dan the Man Emmons. We got into 17.820, and every subsequent trough has been higher than its last. That can't be said for the top that's being put in. We're still at the top. So a possible ascending wedge here on the future where the higher lows are kind of indicative of where we could be, possibly above the 17.936 and a half, which is technically the high end of the day on the NQ at the moment. We're positive at the moment, only up 0.14, though the ES is down on the day. Wow, very, very sideways on a lot of these names. Okay, let's go back into AMD, because AMD didn't seem sideways to me. Uh, wow, okay, and Oh, they things, started talking. Bro, every, oh, they're talking? Yeah, well, Xavier Delgado started talking. Is he so Canadian? Not... He has a Canadian flag behind his back there. Oh, yeah, he's from a Canada yeah, Institute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, so uh, the, the event started. And uh, I guess we'll give you, uh, there's no, there's no uh, closed captions on that? No, unfortunately. No, eh? Okay. That sucks. Uh, I was just talking about AMD. Pardon me? Oh, okay. Th throw that in. Yeah, I yeah. think you have to sign up for it, which is, oh, but maybe you don't and they lied to me. I'll put it in the group chat. <laughs> Deal. Okay, uh, Ram Ram, if I want to show this, uh, this 164 here on AMD. So we got into that whole dollar level and we rejected, but... There's one thing that I can take from this whole debacle with AMD right now is that there is definitely a bottom here at 163.40. Once, twice, OB thrice, and then even again over here holding at 163.40. The tops are not in. They're actually higher highs. So a bit of a uh, you know, trend in that section, but the, the lows are equally um, low on every little dip. So if you want to take maybe something, 163.45, play the range here, on AMD, that could be another possible trade. I am seeing, though, from the corner of my eye that the, the, the dead one, a.k.a. AAPL, popping into that 169.70-ish area, so got above the half dollar. So a little disappointed I covered there, but I'm going to be looking to short Apple, man. Either 170 or 170.50 at the volume-weighted average price. Apple, the dead one on the day. It is past 115, though, Adara. Oh, also, yeah, apparently this is actually on YouTube. Thank you, BCF, BCF um, Gaming, for pointing this out. So I had a whole experience with the Wilson Center website for nothing. So, yeah, that's cool. Oh, the one on YouTube is a little bit uh, slower, though. So I'm yeah. going to stay with the stream I'm on. Um, but that's okay. Yeah, so I'm going to stay with, with that. Right now, though, it is time for the lesson. And if any, I will interrupt myself if I hear anyone say anything. 
Um, there we go. Here's the lesson. Um, also, that dude was actually American. That Xavier Delgado guy, he was actually American. You got bamboozled? Yeah, we got, we did get, we did get bamboozled. No good. But yeah, so um, we're going to talk about RSI, right? So what is the RSI? The RSI is a technical indicator measuring the momentum of the stock price by analyzing recent price changes. And it ranges from 0 to 100. Generally, 0 Generally, zero is going to be oversold territory, which could potentially indicate a buying opportunity. And seven to 100 is going to be, sorry, zero to 30 is oversold. Zero, 70 to 100 is generally going to be overbought territory, suggesting a potential sell-off. And anything between that is, is kind of in between. You're really going to be looking for the areas between zero and 30 and 70 to 100. And here's one example here. So this just kind of shows you when you broke into overbought, shout out to Investopedia, that's going to be over the 70 area. And then under 30% is going to be when you're oversold. And this actually reflects in the chart. But what happens when you have an RSI reversal? We're going to get into that today. Bang. The key to using RSI for momentum trading is going to be identifying those reversals. So you're going to want to look for an overbought reversal, the RSI reaching overbought territory, so above 70, and then starting to trend to the downside without a corresponding drop in price, which this could signal a weakening momentum, which could be a potential sell opportunity. But then what about an oversold reversal? If you have the RSI dropping or dipping into oversold territory below 30 and then starting to rise even though the price remains low, that could indicate a potential buying opportunity as momentum might be shifting to the upside. And so here's what, I love this example because you've got both here. And as uh, Sharif was saying, it's funny because eBay apparently was at one point at 40. You have these higher highs on the chart, but then lower highs on the RSI. So this is bearish divergence. And look what we see after that, a bearish move in the price. Then we see lower lows here in the price, but higher highs on the, diver on the RSI, sorry. That means we have bullish divergence. I love this example because it does show both. So I think that's pretty cool. But why is this useful? Well, it can help you identify situations where the price might be diverging from its recent trends. So if you have an overbought RSI with a flat price action, for example, that might suggest that the buying pressure is fading even before you actually see the price drop. So as you can see here, to go back to this example, we had this move down here in the RSI just slightly before or as the price was accumulating to the upside. So that could give you a sign, hey, we're getting a little bit weak here on that RSI. Maybe we should get ready for a move to the downside and then you can kind of take advantage of that, right? So I think that's pretty key. But also, what if you want to combine your RSI with other tools? Uh, RSI alone is not a foolproof singles signal, so you want to heighten your analysis through things like price action. Do you have a price movement supporting the RSI signal? Uh, or do you have some confirmation from the price chart? Also, do you have higher volume alongside the RSI reversal? Because that can indicate a stronger momentum shift. If you have a lot of volume behind that move, the move might have a little bit more oomph than if you just have a little and then that, you know, not a lot of volume there, right? Support and resistance also really key. Confluence with RSI, is it coming in? Then you might want to oh, be interested because you want to consider support and resistance levels on the price chart because a key, reversal in your key area can add weight to the RSI signal, as you can see here in the GBP USD. You have support as we get the RSI round, winding its way back up. Then as we get to resistance, look where we see some resistance of the RSI. I think it's pretty interesting. So it shows that there is there can be confluence in these areas, and it's worth noting. But how do you put it all together? Well, let's imagine you have a small cap stock experiencing a sharp price increase, which pushes the RSI above 80. But then the price stalls, and the RSI starts trending to the downside. This could be a sign of weakening momentum and a potential short sell opportunity. Remember as well, though, the RSI is just a tool, and you always want to consider other factors like price action and volume, sometimes in confluence with the RSI. Also, though, there are no guarantees. The markets can be unpredictable. And as always, you want to practice good risk management. Also, um, we still have someone talking who is not Fed Chair Powell. Uh. So just a, an update on that. All right. Um, yeah, the lesson's done, though. Okay, so, oh, yeah, quick. Um, there we go. I, sorry, to kind of speed, I guess, spoke a little quickly there. But yeah, I still don't have my eye on anything. CP in the chat was asking um, if I'm not getting involved in anything because I'm worried the market's going to be range bound. If I thought the market was going to be range bound, I think I would have gotten involved. I have to say I'm a little bit more of a range trader there, CP. So I wish that market was range bound. Right now, I'm just having a hard time reading things right now. I find there's a lot of top and churn in a way that I find a little bit difficult to get involved with. I'm still looking at that SQQ, though. Um, and CLSK was the other one I've kind of been looking at all day, so we'll have to see what we do. I don't have any trades right now, though. I'm long AMD, trying to play this range. It keeps dipping into that 
163, 40-ish, 50-ish area, and then bouncing right back up. I'm trying to get the bottom end of this range and try to weasel, you know, a few pennies here, a few pennies there. Let's see if we can wet our beak here uh, at the profits. Nice, uh, right up we go. I got bottom wink on that one. Let's see if we can get continuation though. I really doubt we get continuation right when I get in, but I'm happy that I was able to play the range there because I feel it is very much a range day today, whether on the future or on some of these small, or uh, not the small cap gappers, sorry, the, um, the mag seven names. And so we'll see if we can move up here on AMD. Uh, I'll look for something maybe in the 80s or 70s, that is if we were able to make it up there. It's a positive day today for AMD after a big negative day yesterday. In case you're just joining us, what we got, was it yesterday that we got the telecom news? Um, was that yesterday's news it or was, was that last week? Yeah, okay, thank you. Sometimes uh, the days they, they just... They bleed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yesterday, essentially what the uh, Chinese Communist Party directed some of his... Tele was it last week? Yeah, sorry. I just yeah, realized. that's I'm why so I feel. Sorry, I feel it was like bad. last week. No, it's not your fault. Why do you have to know? Um, Chinese Communist Party gave a directive to its telecom companies not to buy uh, or going forward to avoid buying Intel and AMD chips for security reasons, largely, you know, um, seen as a retaliatory response, obviously, to the AMD and NVIDIA uh, GPU embargo that the Biden administration has put on. But that precipitated a big down move at Intel and AMD. So, you know, the, fa the fact that it's up 2% today without a catalyst. Well, does it actually have a catalyst? Yeah, it did, actually. Didn't it have a catalyst today? It had something. AMD? Two, mm -hmm. two upgrades. Two upgrades, that's it. So yeah, um, a nice bounce back day for AMD. We'll see what we get. Nicely uh, 20 pennies, in, or we were just 20 pennies in the money on this name. Fat Cat, what's up? Hi, Sharif. Just wondering how much depth do you have on your level two? Does it go all the way to min and max price? Um, no, because there's obviously much lower levels than there are currently, but I have almost all the gateways, if not all, okay? And that's by design because I'm on the show and I get most of the permissions. Not all the traders get all the gateways. You need, yeah, you need to be able to, what? Are you talking to me? Okay. Mm, anyway. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> He's being He's like, uh, dude. Uh, the dude's like many, is that Tiff Macklem who said that? It is. It's Tiff Macklem, the Canadian Bank of Canada governor. He's like, we have three downs in our football. One of the differences between Canada and the USA. Yeah, that's the one you should point out, bro. Right. He also Not the lack out a of productivity bill, or anything. Right? But yeah. yeah. He brought a $10 bill and like waved it around to show the Paul Did he bills really? as well. He still has, you could still see it on the screen, actually, Get him, if I Tiff. show you. Look at that. Look at his $10 bill. What? Tiff, Tiffy's a unique individual. Yeah, he's like, when call this me guy... Tiff, guys. Yeah. Well, anyway. What were you saying? Well, this guy told everybody to, to lever up and then he, that we wouldn't increase rates, and then he increased rates by 5%. So a lot of people on this side of the border still a little disgruntled about that. They're in a tiff with Tiff. Oh, there you go, there you go, there you go. Um, in any event, um, what was I talking about before? Oh, sorry, I, I, I have no idea what I was talking about. I forgot. Anyway, we're long AMD. Let's see how this does. Yeah, sorry, I, did, I was just trying to make, yeah, with, with this guy. I'm sorry about that. I did not mean to, your fault. to lose your train of thought there. But right now, Tiff Macklem talking. They started with Tiff, and then we're going to get to Jerome, Papa Powell. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we're starting it off with, with Canada, which is fun, and not always what happens Amp so that's it. cool. Um, let's see if we pamp it there for Canada. Also, I like this Tesla I'm really bamboozled by. We have these higher lows, but we have lower highs, so I don't know if I want to get involved right now. I'm really looking for an opportunity here. I'm holding out for a hero, um, as per that song from the 80s. Uh, I just, I am trying to make sure that I have something I ca I'm comfortable trading. I'm not seeing much of that right now. Rivian, I like that we're holding this 9 EMA. I want to see if we still hold the 9 EMA. Affirm, though, I just remembered I was looking at earlier. Yeah, so Affirm, there's, there's nothing for me here in Affirm either. We're below, you know what? We're below the 90 and maybe we made a pseudo double top if you want to use the, the pre-market high. This is going on my side chart. This is what Sharif and I always use is like the be all end all. If like the stock's behaving well, it goes on the side chart. <laughs> so right now, a firm goes on the side chart. Oracle high of day, says um, Frank, jo Frank Jones, Frank Jones, the one and only you can't close. Shout out to, to Mike <laughs> Jones. But yeah, so ORCL says Frank Jones, high of day. Yeah, this is a 
it's a nice look here in ORCL. Um, or, you know, we can't see the future, and Oracle can't see its new high a day because it's currently mm. at it. So Oracle, okay. all, all upside here, blue sky setup at least on this intraday chart. We have this chop and churn around this 90 MA, generally higher highs, higher lows. Nice look, volume about two and a half mil, so not at all insignificant. Let's no. look at the daily on Oracle because I haven't Decent looked look. at this bad boy in a while. I used to sound like you with the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, Oracle's below its 90 MA. This is not a great look here on, on the daily. But one thing I think Oracle should be looking for is look at this double top here on the daily chart at 118. I think if we fall to 118, that could fall, uh, hold as decent support. Right now we're at 121, so I will say, not like I want Oracle to keep falling, but I think if it does, I would like to see if that 118 holds as a trampoline. How is AMD? Oh, you're I just, AMD. I just took it out. Yeah, playing the range here, Adara. Uh, I want to di digress a second from trading. There's a, okay, so my third favorite sport is boxing. Soccer, football, obviously the first two. My original loves, as I got older, I did adopt boxing, boxing as a sport. And there is a nice fight this weekend. I want to know if you guys are going to be watching it. Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. That should be interesting. Anybody who's following Ryan Garcia on Instagram, what are your thoughts about his actions lately? Because I think he's, he's obviously doing this to promote the fight and to obviously get attention social media-wise. I just don't like how he's doing it, especially he kept that squeaky clean image and then he wants to go to that bad boy image. Not a good look for him. I personally haven't liked it. Are you guys going to be watching that fight? If you are, who do you have for that fight? Are you about Ryan and his speed or are you about Devin and his power? L tag me in the chat. Let me know what you got, if you're going to be watching it and not who you have your money on, but who do you want to win? Who do you think is going to win? I personally haven't seen too much of Devin Haney, so I... Now, I've seen a lot of Ryan Garcia, but I, I kind of feel like I can't really make a, an assessment one way or another. Yeah, okay. Uh, he's like, the, okay, all right. Interesting. Odyssey fights. I train with Garcia. My pick. Shout out to you. Okay. Uh, love it. Give me some more deets. I'd love to know what he is, what he's like uh, in the ring. I hope Garcia gets knocked out again, says Roberto. We know that Tank obviously had that. Great body shot on Ryan last time around. He couldn't recover from that. Uh, go Ryan, says Raul. Ryan is, okay, Brian Fu doesn't like Ryan. Okay, I respect that. I, I see you, Odyssey. I see you. Oscar plays. Coin and BTC look strong now. Okay, let's see what BTC is doing right now because it was not in a good position. Okay, bouncing a little bit now off that eight, that six, 61, 875 into 62, almost in a third there, is BTC. It's about to go flat on the day. So I know everybody's open and closing price are a little bit different on Bitcoin, but mine is around 63,300. So it's about to go green if it bounces up a few more dollars here on BTC. What other one you're saying? Coin, let me have a look at coin. Coin is taking it on the chin. Maybe like one of these fighters is gonna take it on the weekend, but to be honest with you, yeah, coin, bit of a tougher look here for coin on the day. It is starting to recover a little bit, though, off that 205 and two-thirds. Wow, okay, into almost 214 on its way to 215 here is Coinbase. But to go green, we got to get all the way up into 233.50. And the HOD right now on coin is only 233. So we got a ways to go, but that doesn't mean we can't profit along the way. And keeping your eye here on that yellow line on the bottom now, this new yellow line here is the RSI. You're going to be seeing a lot more of this. We're going to have it, uh, we're going to try to have this on as many charts as we can so we can look for price RSI divergence. Keeping an eye on that. But good luck for Coinbase. Reclaiming the volume weighted average price. Uh, local highs there, the highest it's been since around 1030 this morning. The real local high though, I would say is that 217.50. Look at that topping tail candle into that level, and then a big boy, Hwadunk, all the way back down into 205. So Coinbase, trying to recover. So is BTC. Let's keep eyes on that. AMD is on the way up, right back into 163 mid-80s here. So we cover in, in the mid-60s. It pops up another 20 pennies. The range, though, is still intact in the sense that we still have that 163.40 as a base and essentially 164 as a top. We haven't broken through that since around, what time was that, 11.50 or so. so. Keeping an eyes on that. Let's see what everybody else there said in the chat because I was asking about the fight. Uh, Haney, too much power, says why not. Okay. Chef Joe says who? 
He doesn't know any of these fighters. Eddie R, I believe that Adara will one day, will one day, will win one day a literature award on the fight you mentioned no clue. Okay, so you well, get nice. you get love, but on the thank fight, you. he has no idea. Thank you, thank you, Eddie R. Appreciate that. Shout out to you, my man. Um, what else we got here? Comp SRX1, too much violence. Okay, all right. Well, it's just boxing, bro. Uh, 214 slugger, Ryan beat Haney three times before turning pro. Yes, I did hear about their amateur background together. Thank you for pointing that out, 214 slugger. That should be interesting. Um, if that ends up being a factor at all, I know amateurs, uh, the amateur division is a little bit different than the pros, and people seem to change over time. So we'll keep eyes on that. Tisha. Mark's moving a bit on Powell. Yeah, okay, good call. You want to cover that? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so he's just talking right now. He's talking about rates. He's not really AMD saying anything tank. new. He's just kind of doing a bit of a, a recap, but it's certainly a, instead of a pop Powell pump, it's pop Powell dump right here. Um, Substantial increase in the workforce. So he's saying basically workforce concerns. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm hearing him and, and communicate what he's saying at the same time. Saying that even, even with the strength in the economy by many measures, things have been moving into better balance. So that could be a little bit. Um, but he's saying that ratio of job uh, openings to unemployed workers is extremely elevated. Just trying to keep some um, options here. Yeah, thank you, Eddie R. I appreciate that compliment there. I'm happy I got into a short before this, I have to say. Uh, please just punch. Don't have a ton of shares here. I was just trying to take advantage of this move down. The goal, I didn't want to, you know what? I don't, I don't, we're going to have to wait and see what happens here on a firm. But yeah, a firm reacting to the downside here with Papa Powell. He's saying gradual normalization here for the economy. I'm waiting to see if I can hear. Yeah, performance has been quite strong, and the recent data does show, I said data really weirdly there, showing a lack of further progress on inflation this year. If I hear anything else, I will let you guys know. He's still, right now he's recap, recapping that PCE, which I know was a bit of a sticking point there. Um, so he's saying, yeah, the 2.8% in the three and six, sorry for the, the t speaking solely here. I'm trying to make sure I understand what he's saying. He's saying they want to make sure that they're seeing that inflation is moving sustainably towards 2%. So kind of a, a, a recap here. He's saying also that the labor market is moving into better balance, even amidst ongoing strength, and that the broader wage pressures are moderating gradually. So we'll have to see. Market's still reacting re pretty much to the downside of this. The queue's at the bottom of that earlier range here. So let's see what the... Yeah, we broke below that the bottom of that previous range. Bye-bye. Queue's to the downside. Everything to that downside. I'm guessing Sean is short because he seems... Oh. Oh, he's just, yeah, he's just looking at the market. Okay, sorry about that. Pardon? Long Disney. Okay, so house of mouse there for Sean, trying to get, get in line for the uh, Magic Kingdom there to the upside. But yeah, lack of further project progress, ouch, says Heather Tuttle. Yeah, I think the market's certainly reacting to that. Um, he's talking more about policy than Tiff Macklem did, I think, because I remember Tiff was having his little asides, and the only do? light thing that Jerome Powell said was call me Jay, and that was kind of it. And then he got right into recapping the market. Like I said, Nothing new or surprising that he said. Also, he just finished his opening. Oh. So he spoke his opening <laughs> remarks were a lot shorter than what um, what Matt oh, had to is. offer. This yeah. is it. This is it right here. Uh, at least this is what I think it is. Restrictive policy needs further time to work. That means higher for longer. That's the way I read that. Shout out to Katina Man. What are you taking there? What can we have? The Katina Man is long Disney 116.30. Sorry, one, I, I'm dyslexic. 113.60. Yes, thank you, Ram Ram. As you can see there on More Trader TV, that is the. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Uh, he's not long 71s, he's long 60. Uh, it's okay. We're going to fix it. Just, yeah. Uh, you can see there on the right side all his last trades on the Neil's. Uh, on the on the left side, all of Neil's positions and last trades, and as you can see, economic calendar, top stocks, biggest movers, you name it, it's going to be covered there on More Trader TV. Make sure to like and subscribe to that channel so that you can be alerted anytime we are live. All right, AMD absolutely took an AM dump uh, off that 164, uh, 163, sorry, 90 touch. That was the result, likely, of Jerome Powell dropping hot lines, and the entire market tanked. On that news, AMD was not spared as well. All the Meg 7 names pointing down to the right. But what I do see, if uh, you know, if this is any consolation to the bulls or the longs, 
are bottoming tail candles, meaning the dips are being bought up right now. At least it seems that way. Uh, we'll have to wait and see whether or not these bottoming tail candles subsist or whether they're followed by more red candles down into the right. But yeah, uh, nice dip trades possibly here for, on some of the Meg 7 names. Apple came right back into that low day on that last little wick down. 168.22, it dipped into 168.40. So about 18 pennies off low day there for AAPL. It's having itself a day day. Bad yeah. day, bad oh. day, not like good day day. Bad day. Oh, okay, I was saying, yeah, a bad day day. Um, but yeah, so a bad, bad day day maybe. But yeah, so I think too, um, yeah, just waiting to hear some more comments. Also, uh, a real quote from Jerome Powell I did drop in the chat here is, it's a lot of meetings. What do we do at these meetings? Fair question, is what Jerome Powell just said. Yeah. That is a quote, so. What, but, can you say that again? I was concentrating. He said, it's a lot of meetings. Uh, <laughs> what do we do at these meetings? Fair question. That's, a, that's know, what he just said. Good job, bro. Get it together. I, you know, he was, I think he was making a joke there. Yeah, fair. But yeah, he said basically if higher inflation persists, the Fed can maintain the current rate as long as needed. So Excellent. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. that. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good call. Yeah, so and it's obviously a bit of a tougher look there. Essentially what the market didn't want to hear, which is higher for longer. So, you know, widely anticipated that there was not going to be a cut in May. Now we're going to have to see if there's June. Shout out to the Katina man. He's still printing on that Disney long. 113. 61 long on Disney. Keep your eye on that if you are following the Katina Man trades. And he's yelling booms. And all I see is bottoming tail candles. So the market's recovering here a little bit, guys. Right back into 17.9 we go, Adair. Yeah, I mean, I went, I went, let, let me try to work. So I went long the SQQQs. No, sorry, I went short the SQQQ, so that means I went long, and I did that because look at where we recover from this move down. I mean, we didn't close there, but we held this 1150 really well. I was initially going to go short 1150, then I said, Adair, be a little bit more patient. Happy I waited. Got short here 1145, uh, so I guess we're long the market, but that's because the Qs recovered the base of that range really well, and I said, Adair, if that range is coming back, you want to be involved, so I do. Sorry for speaking so quickly. I'm, You know, when, when you're live, you're like right up in these markets. I have to say, it's quite, it's quite fun. We're getting out here now that we're at the bottom of the range. I'm really proud of this trade. I am so proud of what I did with this trade. I played the range, and I'm not, not trying to toot my own horn or anything. I'm just proud. You know what I mean? There's just I, I'm proud of, of getting involved here. Um, sorry, I'm right at the face. I was like, whoo, market. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was really fun. I'm happy with that trade. A firm as well. I'm happy I played that short the way I did. I was not planning. I didn't get involved because we started having Pop Powell talking and got involved because we dipped below that 9 EMA. Oh, then we held below the 9 EMA. Uh, took about 20 pennies on this short. Didn't have a huge position size, but really happy with this Affirm. Really happy with the SQQQs. Basically flat on the day, but um, not flat on, on learning. We're never flat never. on learning. That was, a, that was a weird analogy there. <laughs> but yeah, right now, Tiff Macklem speaking again. Uh, he, I feel like he spends his speech for a lot longer than Powell. Like they're taking turns and Powell's speaking for a lot shorter periods of time. But I will wait and see uh, what happens. And again, if I hear anything, you guys will find out. Sounds good. Okay, let's have a look at WISA. Because it was doing things. We all know what the market's doing right now. It's recovering off that dip. Okay, so WISA is, yeah, this is not, uh, you know, requiring us to cover it at the moment. But I do want to point out that there does seem to be some sort of base forming here on this, if you want to call it a flag pattern, because we have a big move up, then sideways consolidation. There does seem to be some local support here at $6.40. And, you know, that could present you a range trade because there seems to be an equally important or valid top. In the same way that we have support at 640, looks like we have resistance at 7. We're right back at 7 now, so we'll see whether or not the shorts are going to institute anything around this $7 area. Um, I'm willing to bet this is a pay for shorts type thing. Let's find out. Put short at 8 bucks. Yeah, and then it rejects the order, so obviously that means I need to acquire shorts for it but the 640 645 uh dip trade here on the range could be interesting with seven as a profit target we were covering we saw all day and uh well it's up just a little over uh 290 percent at the moment let's flip back to some of these small cap gappers here and see what's afoot so interesting take here with google and softy in the sense that they both dipped aggressively below the volume weighted average price, but both prints ended up getting bought up quickly enough to close above VWAP. You're seeing that here on Softy with that quick wick down into 414 and a quarter. Then the buyer stepped in aggressively to close 
above 415 and three quarters. So that closed above VWAP as well. The same thing here happened with Google. So it dipped aggressively into that 154 area. In fact, it held 154 even and then popped right back up there to go into that 154 and two thirds. So they both close above the volume weighted average price. So Google has been respecting VWAP since essentially it claimed it at 11 o'clock. You had to defend a VWAP initially here at 11.30 and then a second attempt here at one, right at one. And then this obviously wicks right back down, would have probably stopped you out, uh, but it did close above the volume weighted average price. So Google, softy, respecting VWAP on the day. Can't really say the same thing right now for Amazon or Meta, but a case could be made for the monster, AKA NVIDIA. It also did a big dip below the volume weighted average price, but buying was aggressive and pushed it right back up into that 872 level. It's now knocking the door of 875. So good look, good recovery there for NVDA. And then I already talked about that low on Apple, that 168, 30, 40 thereabouts, and then it popped up aggressively. Uh, okay, we're above 17.9 now on the future. Is he saying anything new? Right now he's saying that, oh, when, when you go to enough Basel meetings, G20 summits, you, you end up getting tr trusting the people um, from from other countries. So he's just talking about how we trust TIFF, I guess. He's not saying anything that should move the market. I'll put it that way. He he He's basically just talking like, oh, when you, like he's just really praising other Fed heads. That's all, it is a festival. Fed that's head. all that's happening right now. Um, <laughs> He's saying it's it. very useful to be able to meet other people. Yeah, there's no, there's no real sound bites here coming from, from Papa Powell at this moment, guys. Oh, boy. Um, oh, but this is, yeah, this is really interesting. I'm still, I feel like this, this SQ short range is still short to long. is still kind of happening here. I might get back involved in this range. Sean just threw some money there across the screen. So, um, <laughs> yeah, nice look. NVIDIA says, um, who is this? The Light Traveler. Let's take a look. Yeah, um, NVIDIA actually... Up about one, we had a double top in NVIDIA, but it looks like we're trying to take that out because look at this, up 1.71 on the day. Slightly higher low here as well. I think they want, NVIDIA looks like it wants to take out 877. We had this topic tail candle earlier up into almost 880 showing, you know, at that point that we couldn't eclipse it. But I think it looks like it does want a little bit more. This is an interesting look here for me for sure in NVDA, but right now, I think I still want to play these SQQQs if they're still if, if they'll still have me. <laughs> I'd like to continue to trade the SQQQs because this was this that was that was a trade and that was certainly a little bit of a stressful moment to be in. But I think we are seeing a little bit of a continued range movement and a sell off right now with Papa Powell just a scope. So I want to go I want to go long. We're gonna go long or long the SQQs to be clear. So we're gonna get involved in that at thirty eights if we can. Uh, we'll have to see. I think this might be a bit too rangy. We're we're kind of wicking in and out of things too quickly for me to get involved. But if I can, I would like to be get in, getting involved. Yeah, they are. They're basically taking turns talking. I'm seeing John says, man, he's saying it's like who's on first. <laughs> yeah, so they're taking turns having Jay Pow and, um, and Tiff Macklem talk first. Another comment here coming as well saying, Fed's Powell saying that firm inflation last quarter has introduced new uncertainty over when and whether the Fed will be able to lower rates later this year. So it's a lot of repetition of what we've already heard. You know, some nerves with regards to when inflation rates will be lowered. Yeah. Have you seen AMC today? Yeah, I was talking about this. We were Did up like 12% at one point. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're up, yeah, good call. We're up 15% now, 14.98 to be exact. So interesting look here on AMC. I, I, are we without a catalyst at these levels? Let's find out quickly. No, nothing new on my blotter today from AMC. Was there anything yesterday? Uh, options alert on the 15th, okay, that's it. Yeah, 13th, 12th. Okay, so the 12th, there was a headline, but that was when it was down. So that's not really justifying this move up here on AMC. But we, yeah, like as Brendo showed at the big desk this morning, there's a lot of overlap between Peloton, AMC, GMC, for the exception, uh, GME. Uh, for the exception of GME, they're, all these guys were at all time lows. So it seems as if, you know, we're getting possibly an all-time low bounce here on AMC. $2.47 was a close, 285 the high. As I said, 15% to the good today. It was a beautiful dip trade anytime, either off the 10 or the 20 EMA. The deeper retracements were in the 20, the more you know, superficial retracements were all into the 10. Uh, in case you're wondering, the solid green line on my chart, that's the 10, the solid yellow line, that is a 20 exponential 
moving average. All right, let's have a look here at some other small, uh, large caps. Yeah, we're still below 17.9 on the future, so I don't know how exactly I feel about going along anything here. <coughs> Jay Lee, Sharif, Adara, let's just reflect. There have been four mini fast crashes today where the TQQ sharply dumped. Yet, it's still an overall inside day. Very good point, Jay. And that's the point I wanted to make earlier with that T triple Q trade that I had. It looked like a very much range bound day. And the example that I gave was before I went on my trip, we were kind of stuck in something like this. We were at the 100 point level and I kept looking for a breakout or breakdown where we would go above say 17.9 or below 17.9 and I would look for the wick shimmy dance to, uh, you know, indicate to me whether we we're gonna go up or down, completely forgetting that there was a third option, which is to range. And that's what I feel like we're doing today at the 17.9 level. I feel like we probably do that until things resolve themselves, at least temporarily, maybe in the Middle East. We're gonna have to wait. I haven't got any geopolitical news midday today. I don't know if Adara did, but if we, if we probably got some, we would have heard it from you guys in the chat. So yeah, keeping an eye on that. I've got no trades on at the moment. Katina, man, what are you doing over there? What are you trading? Just so we can tell the viewers. The Katina, man, is still trading Disney 113.60. Neil, any trades? He... Neil was short Apple while Papa was dropping hot lines, but he's still been holding that Peloton short since the morning. Shout out to Neil. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to get their idea for some trades because I'm, I'm having some trouble finding some good stuff here. Uh, Joe Schmo, why are people talking about Jeppy? What is this Jeppy? J-A-P-I? I think it's run before. Yeah, okay, because Joe Schmo was talking about Oh, JP about Morgan Jeppy. Equity Premium Income ETF. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I'm already in uh, the um, XLF, so I, that's enough. Financials for me, exposure. Let's see what else you guys are up to in the chat. Anything you guys are looking at, let me know. Tag me and we'll have a look at that. But for at the moment here, I'm without ideas, Adara. Yeah, I, I'm still interested in, the, the plan here is, if I may, is to get long the SQQs when Powell talks. Because every time Powell talks, <laughs> the market dumps. Really? So the plan is that if we position ourselves here, once Powell begins to speak, then we can cake a couple pennies here. That's all I want. I'm trying to trade within this range. I don't need a breakout. I just want to play my range. That's what I'm okay with. I know that seems like a little bit of a, an idea, but look at how well we respect to this range. I, I'm okay with it. But right now, Tiff Macklem is still talking, so uh, my idea will have to wait a little bit, I guess. Um, let's see here. Uh, but also, Paula Blackford asking what we see on Amazon. So let's take a look at Amazon. AMZN basically flat on the day. Okay, we had a, this is interesting. We have clear resistance to me at least at this 184.60 area. We could not break above this 184.60. It's not like even we even had it with higher highs either or higher lows where so we just kind of were chopping and turning around it. Then we made a decisively lower high. Ironically, not ironically, but interestingly enough, right at that pre-market high, 184.20. Then we start seeing lower highs, lower lows. Right now, Paula, what I'm seeing is a plethora of these intense wicks to the upside that are not being fulfilled. Like, look, we try to wick up into this previous high of 184, but we can't close at the five minute at that level. To me, I think Amazon is giving up the ghost just a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna deliver, express deliver a long right now, unfortunately. I think Amazon, it might be like two to five day shipping for a long right now, but no. Uh, Metaphor aside, jokes aside, I do think we're seeing lower highs, lower lows on Amazon right now, at least in the five minute, I think that supports that. And I think these wicks, uh, real or manufactured to me, show a little bit of, of bearishness because we, we do show we're not able to eclipse these areas. So to me, it's, it's, it looks like it could be a continued move to the, to the downside for AMZN right now. Uh, like there's not, there's not as clear of a pattern to me. Also, Microsoft, has me has me missing a little bit the sim days because this was I would just trade this range I up was and down just about and around. You, but that was the bamboozler right there. That, that was, was the a Powell trick. dump. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, that's what I was saying. Google and micro and Microsoft have all held VWAP quite well. Chef's kiss. Those are great ranges. <laughs> I have to say. Chef's kiss. Ooh, all right. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah. Um, it's a great look there on Softy. Let's pull up Softy, man. Uh, I'm going to get rid of TSLA here. And let's load up MSFT. 
So the range on Microsoft, I would say, is for the most part, it's not exact, it's at 4.15 and three quarters, and then essentially at its best, 4.17 the north side, but for the most part, it's gonna be 4.16.75. And so it's a range trade. Let's call a spade a spade. We're at that low right now. Uh, let's see if we can get long here and uh, try our hand at this range trade. If not, we'll take a loss and whatever. There's about 11 minutes left on the show. We got to trade something. Here we go, right down into that low end of the range. My break is going to be that 50 penny area. So I'll have to get everything out at that 50 penny area. I'm talking about 415.50, Adara. I'm just going to send it to you so I can put it in my okay. stop. Yeah. Yeah, I did not time my, my, my Powell dump trade well enough unfortunately it wasn't able to get filled now we started talking it looks like we're trying to get back to the top of this range that's okay i'm willing to short the top i'm trying to be a little bit adaptable with this range right now he's talking he's not saying anything super significant here they're very very aware of everything is what they're aware of all of it um so yeah they're trying to be transparent and predictable, they're saying. So um, just trying to give a bit of a highlight there. Just it, Yeah, I apologize, guys, for saying a lot of what Powell's saying. I'm trying to find that balance still of making sure I'm talking and still hearing him at the same time. So Fair. apologies for, like, narrating him just a scotch there. But I see you have entered Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, I just had to put on my stop yeah, there. No so we dipped down a little bit more aggressively than I anticipated there, and I was awfully close to getting stopped out. But um, looks as if we, we are still ranging a little bit here. We'll have to see if we make it up into that 416 and three quarters. I did put my stop in at the moment at uh, just the break of the half dollar. We did dip aggressively though into that half dollar. Casro, Sharif, oh, thank you for, first of all for the $2 super chat. Thank you very much, Casro. Sharif, short Tesla with a 158.21 158 stop loss. Enjoy. I do like your look there, and I'll gotta tell you why. 158.19 is a high day, so I like how you're placing your stop just right above that key area of resistance, so that you know you don't get bamboozled. But yeah, I gotta tell you, I know I've got nine minutes left on the show, and I don't think uh, this trade is gonna manifest as quickly as you want, especially since it is a breakdown trade. But I do like your levels. I gotta tell you the truth, I really like it, especially if we break that 155.50. But it looks as if I'm gonna get stopped out here on softy as it is coming back down uh, below the volume weighted average price. So we'll have to either get a pop somewhere in the 50s or that's gonna be the end of the trade here for me on softy. Yeah, so... so uh, and the, the stop didn't work again. That's the second time today that the script stop hasn't worked. Oh, no. Uh, you're out, though, right? So yeah, I, I had to flatten the key. One time the flatten key didn't work. One time the stop script didn't work. And now the second time the stop... Yeah, it's all good. You, you just got to take this kind of stuff with trading. There's no reason to be upset. Yeah, rolling with the yeah. punches. There there. Go, yeah, baby. thank you for that. Also, yeah, so I was just putting some Pop Powell quotes in the chat there. So basically he said this isn't the standard case of overheated demand. He said the inflation that we started seeing at the end of 2021 was a bit unique. And he said mostly because of inflation resulting from restrained supply and elevated de demand. So that's what he was saying specifically um, with regards to uh, the inflation. Just some comments in terms of the I guess the origin of this specific inflation cycle from uh, Jerome Powell that I wanted to mention there too. Uh, Jay Lee pointing this out as well. If you look deep, the hot CPI was mostly due to elevated rent and insurance. That's it. Yeah, Neil and uh, and Shreif and I were talking about this one morning as well. The super core CPI inflation. So, oh, sorry, yeah, I wasn't that was interesting listening. too with regards to the rent and um, and insurance. But yeah, right now the SQQQs. I'm not going to get my dip buy on these SQQQs because we are getting once again to the bottom of the range there on the queues if we like i said if we reject this i'll go i'll go long the queue slash short the sqqqs and um, i'm okay with that because i feel like these are still really range bound as someone was getting at in the chat as well there has been i think it was jay lee there's been uh these pops in and out with, with a lot of intensity but they always stop and end within the the confines of the range so i think that's been really interesting and i mean if i want to call myself a pseudo range trader i have to pseudo range trade so if I like see what I <laughs> like what I'm seeing, I'm gonna get involved. So right now Tiff Macklin's talking, so we're we're, we're okay getting in right get him, now. Get him, Tiff. Let's do it. Where is uh, Christine? Christine, like, Christine has didn't not, show up to the party. She's eh? not here. No. Oh, it's a shame. It's just Tiff and um, Tiff and Jerome. So there's another super chat here from Castro 
O W. Two dollar super chat. L O L Sharif basically at two fifty five now. Wow. Yeah. The wall bounced back up since you said that. But yeah, good point. Look, I, I like your trade. I, I gotta tell you the truth. You have a double top at, on Tesla. It's weak on the day. Obviously, it's below the volume weighted average price. Everything you said was right, Castro. It's just I have to be able to kind of do this trade in six minutes because. In six minutes, I'm up there at the big desk with Brendo, so I just didn't see it manifesting itself all that quickly. But it looks like the market is popping right back up here. And as quickly as I got pushed out of MSFT, as quickly as it's right back into that 416 area. So, yeah, that is the bamboozlement. So, Microsoft moved a dollar there, and I didn't anticipate that, basically based upon how we've been trading all day. So, tough look, but that's just the way things are around here. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is indeed the way things are. I'm trying to get used to how these markets move. I'm happy right now. Sharif said the market goes back up, and I'm in my SQQQ short, so I'm okay with that. Market, if you want to go back up. Uh, yeah, I also I want to clarify. So the reason I'm trading the SQQQs is because uh, with buying power, as I just started in the live, it is a little bit lower, so that's why I'm trading these SQQQs in case anyone's like, why aren't you trading the Qs or the TQQQs? I'm enjoying my SQQQs right now. They've been fun. I've been trying to, again, I had a really great question earlier from, I think, Harris in the chat saying basically how is there have you noticed there's a different way you're looking for stocks and basically what i've been trying to do is i've been trying to look for derivatives or different versions of stocks so instead of tesla i'll trade tssl and we actually had some positive trades on this one right now we're basically flat on it but we did have i was really proud of that short i had on this one earlier so basically what i've been trying to do is i've been looking at the same stocks but i've been looking at them in different ways and i've been looking to approach them differently if that makes sense so if i want to trade an ev stock maybe i'm going to trade a tesla or tsll and a rivian right just trading Trading things in different ways and adapting my approach to make the most of this new style of trading. And it's been it's been really fun so far. And I feel like I've learned a lot being um, jumping into the deep end here. It's been it's been really cool. Right now, though, SQQ, if you want to jump a couple pennies lower so we can oh. get our fill there at 11.42. Oh, SQQ. Damp it, SQQ <laughs> slash pamp the market to make sure we're all balanced there. Yes. Well, I don't know if that can happen, though, right? Well, you know, you're shorting SQQ. I want SQQ. a couple pennies. Yeah, yeah, so if you're shorting SQQ, that means you're pumping the market, Yeah, that's, right? yeah. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, everything is good. I worded there. it weirdly. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, more hotlines coming in from Fed Chair Powell says, current situation is not the standard case of inflation driver, driven by overheated demand, according to him. We'll get more updates there from Powell. Uh, what else we got there from Powell? Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I had another. Yeah, he's learned lessons of bank stress early last year, says supervision was not forceful enough. Um, he also said, uh, Powell says, firm inflation last quarter has introduced new uncertainty over when and whether the Fed will lower rates this year. So that is kind of, to me, that's, the, that's kind of the, the one that I'm looking at. Uncertainty over whether and when. Fed will be able to lower interest rates this year. That's kind of the kicker, and that's, I think, why we're maybe, you know, a little bit down, a little bit up, because the market was pricing in three, three rate cuts this year, according to the last um, dot plot. So that is a bit of a look there. I'm still continuing to look at Softy as it did recover from that 4, 415 dip, but there's only like three minutes left on the show, so I cannot take any more trades. What are you guys looking at? Cascor uh, again, he's got one to you. What do you think of GDXU for gold exposure? Yeah, this is, I've looked at a couple gold names today. Lots of people looking at gold today, understandably so. GDXU, let, let's see. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I need to look at these a little bit more. I probably with, with ETFs that I've said this before, I think that macro and what's happening in price action is sometimes more important than the chart because that's what had me chopped up in some of those SPY and IWM trades I was making uh, in the sim. But I think one thing that's interesting is I think there seems to be some kind of resistance at least intraday at this 3540 level. We try to have a VWAP bounce. We'll see if that maintains. But right now, it's certainly, I think, we're, I think holding view up would be pretty key, but let's take a look at the daily because I think if we're talking like GDXU, you want to you want to see like a, a, a wider back look right on some of these ETFs. To me, there is a level that is screaming at me, a dare look at me and talk about me, and that level is 37. Double top at 37. We have this move down, make a lower low at least recently here, at coming down at 18, and that was going to be uh, February 29th. 
Then look where we find resistance, or look where we find some support. 37, massive resistance becoming massive support to me. I think to me this 37 level is huge. I think if we, we can reclaim 37, and I say reclaim because right now 37 could still spur, spur, serve. I was torn between serve and form there. Serve as resistance. I want to see uh, 37 flip to support. I think that could be a nice look there. But yeah, thank you very much um, for, for that super chat. Casro, right now Jay Lee is... Um, listing his favorite Canadians. <laughs> I'm not joking, that's what's happening right now. He likes John Candy and Norm MacDonald uh, the, and Jim Carrey. Those are three of his favorite Canadians that Jay Powell just Are you listed. serious? I'm not making this up. Yeah, the list. <laughs> Why is this something that we're good talking show. about? Good show today. Oh, good oh, that's today. a good, uh, nice little massage there, especially yeah, since I did traps the other day, Katina, man. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You gotta get Can't believe we only have like 45 out. seconds left. Yeah, I know. It's been an interesting day on these markets, guys. Make sure to hang out with us all week on how to trade. We're going to be talking about small caps all week. And we had the small cap of the century. No, we had a big one today, we saw. Yeah, we had, we say you're tearing me apart, as Neil was saying, but right now, no <laughs> one will be torn apart as we switch over. We will see you guys um, tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Right now, though, Brendan is at the big desk. See you guys. Hey guys, yeah, welcome in. Two o'clock on a busy afternoon here as we get into the final couple of hours of, uh, yeah, a Fed interrupted kind of a day here. Um, Fed Powell not really saying anything. We haven't heard uh, or knew already in the sense that, yeah, inflation.